It's a Friday here on Splash Play, and you know what that means. It's a great day to not draft a running back. In particular today, though, usually, you know, look, it's usually zero RB days here. Today it's zero RB Friday. The rule is we will not be drafting some running backs bright and early today. Going to get some wide receivers, get some tight ends, get some QBs. I don't know. We're going to have some fun today, though. Uh, last draft of the working week here, though. Tomorrow, the big news, the doubleheader with our old pal Pete over at a home and home here. One stream on Splash Play be the Pete and Spags drunk draft you see on your subscribe page right now if you are subscribed to Splash Play. And then Best Ball After Dark on Peach Channel. And I believe it's a free ver uh, version of that tomorrow, too, though. You should still join uh, Peach Channel if you can. Uh, but that's coming up tomorrow. So one more day of drafts here for me. And excited to be doing it with my old pal, Pete, of course. Uh, we do have some regulars here in the chat. Of course, I gave myself away by having, uh, by leaving a chat <laughs> here uh, before the stream started. But we got our guy Travioli in here. And I'm not going to comment on his team because I won't reward people trying to get in my rooms. Yeah, please. This is also, do, don't do it like this, especially. I don't want he he's. I don't want she. <laughs> I don't want little adorable anime laughs and giggles. Please just draft a team that doesn't interfere with mine. That's the hope. Uh, here we go. Shout out to everybody. I appreciate the chat here being here live. Uh, if you are trying to get in my draft rooms or not, uh, but a nice week of some weirdo drafts, including yesterday, but we're going to try to have uh, some fun today. And that fun begins with a man that I'm no stranger to, and I'm not going to stop drafting. Justin Jefferson, come on down. Going to be the highest paid wide receiver in football sometime soon. Happy to be there once again. Uh, Jefferson, it does feel like, again, as I've I've been pushing for, uh, some of the smoke screens out there may be pushing away from it. Jaden Daniels, again, looks like a lock to go to the Commanders once again based on reports at number two. That means that that is one less spot uh, that could be a Minnesota QB if Jaden's not going to go there. As a result for Justin Jefferson, we are looking more at, A, it being Sam Darnold. That's still the most likely outcome theoretically based on the fact they gave him a decent deal and uh, they don't have to draft a QB if they don't want to. It does seem like we're getting closer to it being Drake May going to New England as well. Then can the can the Vikings come up and get McCarthy? That's going to be the big question. If not, then we're in Bo Nix, Michael Penix territory. Penix could be fun, but Bo Nix can run an offense. I've talked about more than enough times here. Uh, so who do you want to correlate with Jefferson? Or do we just want to take Jefferson and just leave it at that? Uh, that'll be something we figure out here as we go. Happy Zero RB Friday. Please, no, no. This is how you get muted. You keep hee-hee-heeing. I'm going to kick your ass out. <laughs> I don't need your hee-hee-hees. This isn't Willy Wonka. <laughs> I don't know why that's... I don't think he did a lot of hee-hee-hees. We had a kind of hee-hee-hee vibe to him. Also a little bit of a petter ass vibe, if we're being honest. That's either here nor there. Let's see what Wade Moody does here. Jameer Gibbs. Again, this being a more normal room, seeing the running backs go. So a good place to be a zero RB run, hopefully. We'll see that. I agree with Bob here. Bob, Bob might as well be my burner. You guys could see my hands here. I'm not the one typing, but Bob is speaking my love language <laughs> in the chat here today. He's telling people to not come in the draft room to protect my portfolio. Uh, he's he's Beating down Trav Travioli's here and his he he he's. Michael Jackson. You know who did he he he's? Michael Jackson. You want to be in the boat with Michael Jackson? Hmm. Think about that one, Travioli. All right, Puka Nakua, pick 11. I, again, we've talked about this enough times. Garrett Wilson at 10. Just batshit. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't be coming up when they add Mike Williams. He shouldn't be coming up when they're heavily linked to Brock Bowers. Uh, though the Colts also apparently dying to get Brock Bowers, but not going to trade up to get him, supposedly, is the uh, latest report from, I think, the athletic that came out today. Besides that, though, Garrett Wilson, Malik Neighbors linked to the Jets, Brock Bowers linked to the Jets. There's enough things linked to the Jets that Garrett Wilson, I think, one of the worst picks that it just keeps holding and keeps moving up a little bit sometimes in rooms. Uh, I would rather have Puka, I think, 10 times out of 10, but we'll say 9. It's a probability game, 9 times out of 10. Oh, another Bob. Robert here chiming in about the hee <laughs> hee crew uh, getting stomped here. <laughs> the creepy bug guy from Uncle Buck did the hee hee. That's a that is a boomer reference, but I do remember Uncle Buck. John Candy. John Candy had his one of his funnier times. That, the, honestly, I don't remember anything about the movie itself because that was like when I was, I don't know, two, three, somewhere in that range. Remember him in Home Alone more. It's cameo in Home Alone. <laughs> Bobs are hating. This is what happens. You get ganged up by the crew, me and the Bobs. Hopefully not the Bobs from Office Space, but I'll take them. Drake London goes 16 here. Frankly, I'd flip Garrett Wilson and, and Drake London rather than take Garrett Wilson at 10. <laughs> Everybody really chiming in with the hee hee. There we go. A Carlos too. Two bobs and a Carlos. Rock the vote, guys. 
are you pro he he? If I knew how to do polls, I'd do one. You pro he he or anti he he? Let me know. He he feels to me again like anime Japanese girl, like schoolgirl. I think, and that's like the most favorable. He he also like creepy pet, like creepy. Like, I'm, I'm throwing so many pedophile jokes out there today. Like creepy pedophile, the mustache. <laughs> I think also he he he. <laughs> There's no again. I think we just heard who the he 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 gang is, and I don't think you want them. Um, or what is going on here? Are we on the clock? Mar oh, this guy takes Josh Allen. Marvin Harrison at pick 19. What a tasty treat for me. The rare Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison start. We are, we are doing it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Zero RB Friday. You know what? Here, here. I want you guys to see. Look at, look how fucking happy I am. <laughs> look, look at how, look at the joy in my face. That's what happens when I get a team like this going. I know nobody does, nobody should be forced to see my face zoomed in like that. Uh, though, you know, <laughs> still, I want you guys to experience joy. Like I just got, this is my favorite combo. I think I got it in one other draft on stream. And again, the same joy filled me then it's like the, it's like the ghost of like nice Christmas. <laughs> I don't know. Ebenezer Scrooge getting visited by a ghost who immediately makes him positive. That's how I feel. Uh, the only way it could have gotten better is if Malik neighbors had come back to me at 30, a Jefferson Harrison Malik neighbors start. You give me the vet ceiling floor guy. Who's going to get get the biggest contract in football coming up. You get Marvin Harrison and neighbors. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. You'd be watching this would be a, this poor stream would have to move to Pornhub. I'd be <laughs> I'd just J and O here. I don't know why I censored myself on that. <laughs> hat is okay. He, he is grotesque. I feel like hat is like a thing that a dad would text like hey, in response to like a thing that's funny. Uh, Cause you know, they don't do LOLs. They think LOLs are beneath them. Norm rooms us feel great. I agree. What, what about teehees? Only if you're, uh, what is it? The Cartman fairy version from South Park. I think that character does some fine teehees. All right. We are, boy, Derek Henry's come up, huh? Oh fuck. Wait, did I put, yeah, I put DJ Moore in the thumbnail guys. <laughs> We're cooking thumbnail guy. Uh, six picks after ADP. Oh, what a great Friday. Traviola, you can stay in the room, bud. You hee hee away. He he your heart away. Team so far. Jefferson Harrison, DJ Moore at 30. Remember when DJ Moore was going at the one two turn and this guy's got him at 30 and it's even with Jefferson and Harrison? Ooh. Oh, the haters who don't like seeing me get good drafts and soft rooms are apoplectic right now. <laughs> I'm crushing it. All right, well, fuck off. <laughs> fuck off, Chris. I don't need that. I don't need this energy. I was feeling good. He is humble. He is creepy. <laughs> I didn't realize people had such strong feelings about that. How we feel about email sign-offs? That'll be the next topic. Are you a cheers guy? Are you a best? I've always been a thanks guy or a thanks again if I say thanks in the email. I have an attitude of gratitude over email. If nothing else. Happy thumbnail. He. <laughs> Yo, Trav, yo, I'll give you this. This is making me laugh today. You're, you're making me laugh. doesn't hurt that, again, I'm having a sick draft right now, right in front of your eyes. Is this the big board winner developing right in front of your eyes? I think so. And I could say that. I don't care how I handle these next 17 rounds. I think these three are strong enough. Jeff giving me some strategy. I feel like Jeff is like my coach. Like Jeff gives me some good feedback about what he's seeing with the board, what he would do. Gets me on Braylon Allen, even though I don't love the analytics on Braylon Allen, but he's a big guy. Visited the Cowboys enough. I get it. Sounds like Spags got the better deal on MHJ. That's true. I did get the better deal on MHJ. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. Got to defend me against these Chris's. These Chris's are coming in shitting in my face. I feel bad, though. I, I do I have to say, um, earlier in the week, I did browbeat our guy, Christopher, um, <laughs> on, on his birthday because he was just fucking up the draft being right next to me. Um, feel bad about that one. I, I I hate being mean to a fellow Chris and especially, you know, people just want to be excited. I get being excited. I wanted to be in draft rooms. I got to be, I got to be better about it. I just want to like, I want to have good teams. I'm not drafting off stream right now. Like this is, I think my thing for BBM. I'll have to draft off stream because we're not gonna be able to hit 150 on stream. And I don't want to dilute my portfolio like that. Um, but I think I'm just going to do only on stream for the most part for the beginning of BBM. And then in April or in April, in August, I will then be heavily going a little bit more off stream. That's going to be my hope. There you go, Chris. Oh, you changed your color. I feel like you were purple before, but shout out Chris Ford here and happy birthday week. I hope you're feeling better too, Chris. Yeah, I don't want to, I like, you know, too, because you never know people are going through in their lives. Like, I don't want to be mean. I don't be mean for stuff like that. I have to defend my portfolio. I'll still do that. I'm going to defend this wall. I'm going to protect this house. You guys remember old Under Armour commercials, but 
uh, still need to, I need to be kind to our guys, even if their name is Snatch Catchers, <laughs> even if their username on Underdog, and they thought it was a good idea <laughs> to call themselves Snatch Catchers, which sounds like a Rick and Morty alternate universe cable thing. Uh, that's not how, that's not the actual name of the bit. Oh boy, we have a real fucking nice pick. We have two nice picks really here. We got a lot. We got a lot cooking here. Zero RB Friday is my favorite holiday. Come on, Joe. Joe Buttiger, what are you going to do? Joe Butt, take Lamar. Just take Lamar. Who could resist Lamar Jackson at this point? That tasty treat, Lamar Jackson. All right. Keenan Allen time. Uh, if he took Keenan Allen, I would have been happy to take Odunze, but we have this bet on DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, happy to do it. Again, the risk really is that Chicago has been having top 30 visits with every top prospect, including Malik Neighbors, including Brock Bowers, including Romo Odunze. If those guys go to Chicago, it does sort of hurt DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. But I love the Chicago stack, as I've talked about here, getting it uh, for cheap, at least on the DJ Moore side. With Jefferson and Harrison, I'm very pleased with this start. Obviously, I have to I have to not get sniped on old Caleb Williams, but we'll see. Click clack. Click clack indeed. Oh, <laughs> there were he he he's the Friday the 13th. It was <laughs> I, yeah, that's a known Friday the 13th fan. Big believer in Jason. If any uh, if any killer in a movie could be like a star football player, it's got to be Jason. The Romo Dunze of, <laughs> of movie monsters. Big body. Doesn't, you know, doesn't create a lot of separation. If anything, he closes the gap. Jason, my 101. I missed the, uh, the OJ tribute was yesterday where I pretended I didn't know what he did in the 90s, but I uh, applauded him for his time at USC and in All-Pro Football 2K5 or whatever that was. The only game with OJ and Barry Sanders in it, as far as I know. Uh, Trey McBride goes at 50. Would have been nice to consider him on the way back because I feel pretty good at wide receiver right now. I uh, would have been happy to deviate, but instead, uh, we may really just put, our, put the old balls on somebody's head here um, at wide receiver. Uh, Travioli takes Terry McLaurin. Uh, McLaurin, man, the ADPs, I think in yesterday's room, we saw him go at 66. I'm a big believer in him. I would take him ahead of where Travioli did, but he takes him there, and that's fine. A little bit older, though, than I would have thought. I guess would be the one thing we could point to. Uh, you know, I don't love the wide receivers right here. Amari Cooper, I'm okay with. I think he'd be an okay wide receiver five. I also kind of want to keep flexibility for rookies. A little bit bummed I got shut out on McBride. So I'm actually going to take Dalton Kincaid here. I think Kincaid to me, I was thinking about it when I did that Troy Franklin attempt uh, with Josh Allen. Like I think whoever is going to go to Buffalo is just going to open up enough opportunity for Dalton Kincaid. Like Curtis Samuel's not a huge targeter. Uh, Khalil Shakir, we talked about yesterday, a lot more efficient than I thought was possible with over a 0.7 EPA per target. That said, you know, he still wasn't getting targets at a high rate. He'll get a little bit more without Diggs, without Gabe Davis out there, but I don't think he's going to be, you know, like a, a 30% target route run rate guy. So who's going to get the targets? It's whoever they're coming in as a rookie, or it's going to be Dalton Kincaid, who already is trusted, gets another year in the system. Um, they want to move him around, we're using him out of the slot a little bit more with Dawson Knox on the field. I think Kincaid's a little bit undervalued in terms of like the ADP is right to me, but I don't know. I think he's treated as like, yeah, he's, he's here. I'll take him. I think he should be prioritized a little bit more. I'm um, including by me. So that's how I feel about that. Uh, how full is the tournament now? Uh, yesterday we were at just under 90. So today I presume we're a little bit over 90. I think the little board has slowed it up enough. Yeah. 90.8%. So hopefully we'll get at least one more week of drafts. And uh, shout out our, our gal, Steph, here. Steph and, uh doing a good job usually at work during the time Splash Play is on. So glad to see her in here. Of course, doing great content as well. I heard Bindles at a stream the other week that I watched a little bit of. So shout out to those guys. And check out Bindles, too. Bindles and our guy, Tyler, uh, did an exposure review for themselves. Where Tyler has now drafted, I think, uh, what is he drafted? 190 teams? I, I didn't see the video, but uh, but check that one out, too. If uh, you want some things that are not, not me content, those two. Bindles and Steph, Bindles and Tyler. This is all Bindles. I just I shill Bindles here. My boy Bindles. Love Kincaid without digs there. It's a wheels up from an ADP. I, I agree. I think, again, another guy probably like a little bit more in, you know, in full point PPR, just because I think he can get you, you know, a good amount of catches in a game. But he does have touchdown equity. We saw him be a viable red zone target last year. Uh, how much work did he get? I also, by the way, keep forgetting to tweet out the show. I'm tweeting it out late. Pretend I did it. <laughs> Pretend I did it on time. Um, let's see. Kincaid last year. Kincaid got 0.6 red zone targets a game. Um, actually didn't convert in the red zone. No, no red zone touchdowns. 
which is cr- I thought he had I really thought he had one. I could be wrong about that. Team seven going rogue. Okay, I'm not paying enough attention here. Oh, Joe Budger. Oh no, he's taking AR and oh boy. I mean, look, he's really locking down elite QB. <laughs> you can make the case. Uh, the Rasheed Rice pick at 31 is not good. Why is this happening in every room now? Yesterday we had somebody take five QBs in the first six rounds or something, including reaching for JJ McCarthy and some other bullshit. Don't take another QB, man. Don't do it. Just do normal things. Okay, Pacheco is a normal pick. Good for him. Uh, if the Minnesota stack is just right here, I find it hard to pass up. Who would I go down and get? Uh, you know what? Let's let's go crazy. It's zero RB Friday. I'm getting my guys. I'm taking Brock Bowers here. I feel like I have a real advantage with my wide receiver core right now. And I don't think it gets improved enough by Jordan Addison, especially because I don't have confidence in who the Vikings QB is going to be. So I can't really, like, I can't complete the stack logically. And I do, I've taken enough. I know Pete is also talking about on his stream, and I was, like, nodding in agreement when he's talking about it. Um, I like bully tight end. I, I think this year it makes sense to be able to do it, especially if you hit that wide receiver pocket well and early. So, Team so far, Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Dalton Kincaid, Brock Bowers. So we have Chicago, potentially could have a full Chicago stack that people don't know exists right now because Brock Bowers, one of his his only top 30 visit, not that it matters for him because he's a top prospect, the only top 30 visit he had was to Chicago. So uh, could be something interesting there. Look, I love Bowers as my tight end one. He's my tight end one in enough builds, but I, I do think for him as tight end one, you kind of want to get to three tight ends. For him as tight end two, like I'm done. I'm, I'm very done. Late but present. There we go. Late as well, but I hit the like button. Make up shout out Felix here. Saw Felix do a stream too. Shout out to him. Uh, former, of course, Dra- uh, DraftKings million dollar winner in best ball too. So you want somebody with credentials? There's another guy for you. Just giving out all the plugs today. Like, watch this channel, too. Actually, I should probably let me do that. Dak goes at 74 here, which I think is fine. Honestly, I mentioned it yesterday. Like, the, somebody in the draft room took Dak ahead of Patrick Mahomes. That's not how you should do it. You should still, you know, abide by ADPs to some guidelines. That said, like, I think that Dak deserves to be in the 50s with how he played last year. And that offense, you know, really accelerating and pass rate over expectation down the home stretch. Um, and probably, you know, a shot to add another weapon. And the run game has a shot to be worse this year. Uh, so I think there's a, a couple of decent outs there. Kamara would be a nice discount at this point. I am not the biggest believer in him. I do think that we can target a fun potential week 17 game and actually increase our NFC North bet guy that, you know, I'm in the bag for as wide receiver five. We're doing it. Christian Watson. Come on down. Team so far, Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison, Jr. DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, uh, Christian Watson, Dalton Kincaid, Brock Bowers, this team. Seems spicy, guys. I think we just won BBM. Love Bowers over Kincaid, really. Uh, I think they're... Like, I like Bowers. I have a lot more Bowers in my portfolio, so I guess I'm not off on that. But I think Kincaid... The Kincaid should be ahead in ADP. But I do like these guys as a pairing. And honestly, I do like Bowers more than Kittle. I know that's going to be a hot take. I would take Bowers next to Kincaid. I think that's... They don't have to be priced next to each other, but I would rather have Bowers than, than I think Kyle Pitts. It's a good situation for Kyle Pitts. I don't, I'm not confident in that one, but I'm more confident in Brock hitting the field and being good, at least without knowing his destination. I guess his destination could be a part of the reason he goes where he does. I think that's what we're going to do. Barrels will be over Kincaid next year. I think it's a good possibility. Uh, just started getting draft reps in, but for tight end, I've only liked uh, liked having two top guys and done. Okay, got it, got it. So, yeah, I agree. Like, that's how I feel about it. I think there's different pockets you can work where, you know, if you're not getting a tight end by this point, you're probably going three tight ends. And I think you could make it work with three late tight ends. You're trying to target some ones that have upside. Um, there are guys as well, like Colby Parkinson, who we've talked about, where I, I do think Davis Allen's more talented. But Parkinson got a big free agent deal, and the Rams are a team that we know passes a lot, and you're getting leverage then on all the highly owned Puka Cooper Cup, Kyron Williams stuff too when you get to the tournament, the playoff nitty-gritty of it all. So, like, I think there's lots of ways to attack tight end, but I think two early-ish tight ends feels good. Um, One and then, like, a Ninjoku tier one I think is also okay. So you're getting to two, but a little bit later. Uh, But I think three later on has definitely been my most popular build, besides ones with Bowers. Dak choked in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is the kind of thing that people in these drafts do think about. 
Uh, guys, we're about 20 minutes in, which I think is the average watch time of the video. So why not subscribe down below? Hit the like button. Of course, Splash Play, we do new drafts Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. here, trying to bring in the new info, talk about the news items. Of course, with the NFL draft coming up, it's going to be a start of another info flow. Where we'll break down everything as always, but subscribe, hit that like button, helps out a lot here as a one person channel. And of course, subscribe too, because tomorrow, reunited with my pal Pete Overzet on this channel, doing the Ode Drunk draft for him hitting 15K subs, us uh, hitting 3K subs here. And he'll continue to rise, and I'll continue just, <laughs> bloop, 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 just slowly moving along. But hey, it's I'm happy to do it. I enjoy the process. I enjoy having a community. It's fun to hang out with. And uh, that's what you guys are. That's what you sweet babies are. I think we're going to, well, fuck, Mostert's a good pick. Mostert's a good pick to, to break the run here. But I think we might have Arizona, and I think we might have Chicago. We're going Kyler. Kyler picked 91. When I've seen him go in the 60s and 70s in these rooms, I'm happy to do that. Obviously, the bet we're making here is that Arizona does not trade out of four, and we see them take Marvin Harrison, which is a bet that people are making. I probably haven't made it enough because I think that Arizona might be more likely to trade out, which would then make it so we get Harrison five to the Chargers, six would be neighbors then to the Giants, which would not be the most fun. So I don't, I don't like playing that outcome quite as much. Uh, Joe Rudiger has a one, three, two, three build in this. Okay. Oh, in the pre flow pre-show draft. Okay. Well here he's got only one receiver and it's a guy that's accused of criminal charges that had to just turn him in <laughs> to turn himself in for an arrest. So, uh, Joe Budiger again, we say it on here. I, I'm a proud red badge. Uh, that said being a, having a badge at this point with how long underdog has existed, it does not mean that you were necessarily a good drafter. And I think we are seeing that uh, firsthand right now. Uh, we are going to be in a tough position at, at running back, I think. <laughs> it's going to be the big issue for this team. But let's see these next four picks do. Hopefully nothing stupid. Hopefully these guys don't get crazy here. Samir White. Okay, Brian Robinson. Good pick for Travioli. <clears throat> Brian Robinson also, uh, Pete's short form video did on Deposit Kingdom Discord pointing out uh, discrepancies in rankings. Uh, pretty much every sharp ranker out there, apparently. Uh, the ETR, Legendary Upside. I forget who the third one was that he had. Uh, somebody I'm sure knows out there. There's a third ranker that he had in the mix too. Uh, the point being, uh, they all had Brian Robinson over Eckler. That's what we've been saying here on stream, so I was glad to hear that too. Um, Brian Robinson's going to be the lead back. This guy sniped fucking Caleb for no reason. <laughs> I fucking... Oh, God! Why? Why? Oh, motherfucker. I think Trey Benson is the most appropriate value here. We take him. What a fucking dipshit, man. You took him, I guess, because he has DeAndre Swift, but that is infuriating. Wanted Caleb so bad. Did he have something that I sniped? No, I didn't even take anything from him. So he just did that to be a dick, really. Ugh. And yes, it was Road of His. It was Sean Siegel's rankings. That was it. Good, good call by Chris. Oh, what an ass. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the support here. Uh, that, what is Caleb's ADP right now? Caleb 105. So yeah, he reached to get Caleb for that. Unfucking believable I mean, the good news, I guess, is that we still have Kyler. We still have the theoretical correlation with MHJ. That hurt, though. Getting Kyler and Caleb and then just going on a big running back run would have been the best move for me. Uh, but that's it. Welcome to normal rooms. Yeah, look. I think Travioli, GWB. I think those guys, I think GWB might be in the chat. Uh, those guys are, <laughs> were kind enough to do the logical thing, not do that. But yes, I, I'm in pain too. St dick move, SMH, QBs drive quickly. Yep, yep. Oh, we'll give the team a read. That hurt, but it's okay. We persevere. Uh, Kyler Murray, Trey Benson, Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Christian Watson, Don Kincaid, Brock Bowers, you really want Caleb Williams here because A, he runs enough that there's going to be upside there. B, he also is going to create enough passing volume in the scenario where we're saying that DJ Moore and Caleb um, and Keenan Allen pay off their ADPs and theoretically even Brock Bowers. But we're now not getting that outcome, so that's pretty tough. <sighs> would I rather had Caleb over Kyler for this build specifically? I don't think taking Caleb at 91 would be a good move. Um, I think that would undo some of the good of getting more at 30, so... I don't believe on that. Uh, that would be helpful, but I appreciate trying to make me feel better <laughs> in the sentiment. 
And I, so I think that Adam's just doing a bit here. Don't worry. And the Bears are not passing on Caleb. I think they are. That is pretty much locked in, including the fact that, by the way, uh, a thing that does even more smoke, you now can't buy the Bears number 18 jersey. Uh, Caleb Williams High School number was number 18. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, you can't customize number 18 to put a name on it. So any other jersey that's not accounted for, you can do that. Same thing happened with Trevor Lawrence when he was going to the Jags. So uh, something to keep in mind there that if you do have any reason to believe that Caleb Williams wouldn't go number one, uh, that should be assuaged. I mean, I could try to get, well, I don't even want to say it with Joe Buttiger here, <laughs> but let's, let's take a breath. All right, he takes Dobbs. Could take Justin Herbert for the potential correlation with Marvin Harrison and really try to pin down somebody going with Marvin Harrison. And then, then I would have in that scenario either a naked Kyler or a naked Herbert. Naked Herbert would not feel good. I think Brooks is going to come up in ADP. I'm going to punt this decision, I think. Yeah, I, I don't think I, I'm not dying for Herbert, to be honest. But it, I think it makes sense this build if we're going to play something that isn't Caleb Williams. But for now, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, latest reports, I think, again, probably Jonathan Brooks' agents putting out reports to the friendly NFL people. Uh, Jonathan Brooks could be ready for week one is what they're saying. Still think ready for week one might not be full go in week one. Coming off the ACL tear that he had at the time of year that he had. Uh, it was basically in November, I believe. So for Jonathan Brooks, that's the concern there. Uh, now, when Kyler Murray outscores Caleb Williams week 17, you have a neat build. That's true. That is the one positive that we can look at for this. Uh, but yes, uh, pre beautiful correlation would be a nice thing. <laughs> the Herbert Keenan legacy stack. Yeah, just two bros supporting each other on the way down <laughs> their careers. I would hope naked Herbert feels good to his girlfriend. I don't know who his girlfriend is. I will say, you know, Jared Goff. That's the one that I will that I'll always have uh, seared in my brain. Kristen Harper. Ooh, la la. And you know, she's a nice girl, too, because she's one to put up with the fact that he was Jared Goff, uh, loser Jared Goff. <laughs> When they started dating, though still multi-millionaire loser Jared Goff, but now he's great again. So re you reap what you sow, right? Uh, if I scoop up Braylon Allen, should be able to have the Cowboys starting running back locked in. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, I guess with Benson and Brooks, fair, fair point. And really, if you are going to take a pair of running backs and hope that they can get you rookie production, uh, Benson and Brooks are really the only ones at this point that feel like they'll get the draft capital to get there. And Brooks, I uh, think both guys, no matter what, have the opportunity to get on the field as a pass catcher. So Benson and Brooks, solid plays. Uh, Jane Daniels goes to Travioli. Good pick by him at 123. Uh, Jane Daniels, we see sometimes going to the 100 area. Uh, if you're getting him in the 120s, especially as we talked about, uh, correlated with Terry McLaurin here, making that bet on Washington. I think a nice start for, uh, for Travioli or whatever. Nice start. Nice midpoint for Travioli. All right, MTK Luzette, I'm sure is going to take Justin Herbert here now. Just for the, the synergy, the symmetry of it all. All right, takes Khalil Shakir. I'm going to take Herbert at this point and just hope that we get Herbert with Marvin Harrison Jr. as the other outcome. Um, so we've cornered the Marvin Harrison market. We are en route to potentially cornering the Cowboys running back market. And we're pairing that with Chicago Stack, with Brock Bowers, with Marvin Harrison, with Dalton Kincaid, who is getting a benefit from no digs. Whatever happens at receiver, we'll see. Um, I like the team. So the team so far, Kyler Murray, I think my first share of Justin Herbert this year, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Christian Watson, a lot of NFC North correlation potentially, then Dalton Kincaid and Brock Bowers. I'm a fan of the team. Obviously, we got to make up a running back still, but I think we got two good rookies. I agree. I agree. Does Brooks News being ready week one sway me over Chase Brown? Mm. Yeah, that's it. I, I think he's going to get priced up more. Chase Brown at this point, I think, is priced appropriately. He might come up a little bit when, you know, casual, I guess, cooler heads prevail and people realize that Zach Moss getting kind of mid-money doesn't really matter that much. Uh, so I think Chase Brown can come up, whereas Jonathan Brooks, no matter where he goes, unless it's like as a pure backup kind of situation, if he goes to a Minnesota or something, um, that's the one thing that's not going to make him come up. If he goes to Carolina and is the lead back, if he goes to Dallas and is the lead back, especially if he goes to Buffalo and is like a lever off of James Cook, I think both he and Benson have a lot of good outcomes. Herbert's Minnesota picking up steam. Interesting. I, I'd be shocked by that. 
what would they be even giving up? I guess their two first round picks and then a, another future first. I, I I can't because that would be such a big cap hit for the Chargers. I think that's the thing is it's like a it's not like a forty million dollar cap hit or something like that. Uh, would have entertained Quentin Johnson at some point, but a pick one thirty seven with me needing to make up at running back probably not the play for me. Uh, where's that coming from? I don't know. Jason said it. <laughs> My source, Jason in chat. Reports, according to Jason in chat, said that Herbert getting some steam. Could be local Minnesota, if I had to guess. That's the kind of thing that you would hear that type of talk from. Uh, Joe Budiger has got a 3620 here, so he's doing the inverse of what I've done, I suppose. Uh, it does take Josh Palmer, though, so... Oh, no. Can't get my Chargers correlation. Um, Ford, Charbonnet... I prefer Ford. I'm heavy on Ford, though, but I think in this build, I want to go with guys that I have some confidence in. Jerome Ford, we know, is going to have a role in the beginning of the year. Charbonnet in ambiguous backfield with a new coaching staff. Uh, that's the thing that determines the ambiguous backfield portion of things. Uh, that's where Charbonnet can benefit, but I just like Jerome Ford a little bit more. Nick Chubb, though, since we're talking about Jerome Ford, uh, Nick Chubb did renegotiate his deal, as we speculated. Uh, he's going to be staying on the Browns now, so I guess there was a threat of a cut there, uh, but he came down to earth with his deal and now will be on board for a year. Still the expectation with Nick Chubb, going to be on the pup list, likely to start the first month and maybe a little bit longer than that. We'll see, but going to be a ramp up for sure for a guy who had to have two knee procedures. Um, I think the last one was in end of November, so older guy as well, over 25, not a good one. Oh, Felix. I didn't know Felix was a Chargers fan. Stop it as a Chargers fan. No way. And then Jason saying, Google it. Okay, we're getting the Google it here. I'll, you know what? I'll Google it. Justin Herbert, Minnesota. Uh, locked on Vikings. So this is exactly, exactly what I'm talking about. It's all Vikings. <laughs> beats. The Justin Herbert rumors just won't here. I'll, I'll share my screen real fast. We're coming up fast. But Justin Re Herbert rumors just won't die for Vikings. Um, quietly for about six weeks some have envisioned a trade but who have, who's envisioned at vikings territory.com you tell me <laughs> it's all just the quote from yeah okay it's a local minnesota radio thing i'm on the clock here but local minnesota radio reports <laughs> i think it's, it's a little flimsy is what i would say okay um we have the bet on minnesota i'm willing to take a shot at ty chandler here Think we could firm up wide receiver even more, but we're just we're risking me dead in the water at running back. So if you need to get some production here and Ty Chandler, hopefully the Vikings don't draft another running back. They have brought in a good amount though, so that is a concern point. Uh, let's give the team a read here, and then I'll show you the article if you guys want to see it. Uh, Kyler Murray and Justin Herbert at QB, running back Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, wide receiver Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Christian Watson. So, again, I think we're correlated nicely for week 17, potentially for the NFC North. Uh, Dalton Kincaid, Brock Bowers, a tight end. That is what we're looking at. And then here we go. Just so I, we, we all know, I'm not making up this fucking bullshit I just saw. <laughs> again, vikingsterritory.com. Here's the Give him the banner. Give him the plug. Uh, Herbert Rivers just won't die. <laughs> so uh, quietly for about six weeks. Uh, very quietly, to be clear, because they never crossed my radar once. And I look at every rumor that I possibly can. Uh, so the idea goes like this. New head coach Jim Harbaugh at all costs to find a way to draft McCarthy. And then McCarthy, we're talking about Harbaugh, his flowery comments for J.J. McCarthy. And then here, last week, score north. <laughs> Judd Zolgag, the most Minnesota name that might ever exist. Judd Zolgag of Score North. He kept the rumors alive. And SI.com published an article too, but they're just an aggregator doing bullshit at this point. So I wouldn't put that one there. Uh, but, but the Judd Zolgag source. And then also SB Nation, I presume their Vikings blog, perhaps. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm not on the clock. Or I'm not on the clock. Oh, went to another window. Fuck. Because okay, so this is just somebody here completely making up a trade is the SB Nation one. So look, I don't think this is a smoke, there's fire one. I just need to point out, this is just Vikings fan doing fan fiction. And that's okay. Like that's, but I would not pass my rumor and innuendo sniff test is all I would say. There we go. We got to the bottom of it. I appreciate Jason putting it on my radar though, because I didn't know that Vikings fans were holding up this, this Twilight fan fiction. They want the werewolf Justin Herbert in their lives. They want to do kissy face them until he ends up imprinting on their child. And then I guess it's going to make love to the baby. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you guys might know more Twilight than me. But that's what I know of it. 
It's on the internet. It's got to be true, right? Yeah, there we go. Seems like a trustworthy site. There you go. Yeah, look, I gave a lot of plugs at him. Plug in Vikings territory. That's where I go to for all my Vikings bullshit. Vikings favorites to win Super Bowl? Question <laughs> mark. And then when they don't get a QB in the draft because they don't trade up or they aren't willing to give up enough to trade up, Sam Darnold, better pick than all QBs in class? I don't know, vikingsterritory.com. You tell me. You tell me what's going on. Unbelievable. That was funny, though. <laughs> it is rumors. It is rumors. I'll, I'll, I will give Jason that. I hope it works out for Jason, really. Nice little pocket at running back here for a little... RB hungry boy as I am. Joe Buttigers just what is what are you doing? How does he have a red badge? I guess he's just wasted a lot of money underdog. We know the answer, but gee whiz, Joe. Gee Willikers, Joe. That's what I'd say. Come on, Joe. All right, we got it. Our guy Jeff has advocated for it. Who am I to resist? Now watch the Cowboys get Marshawn Lloyd and me. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know a famous bridge in Philadelphia, but hanging from whatever famous bridge in Philadelphia. Braylon Allen, come on down. Uh, 2552 here. Let me read this kind chat from our guy Tyler. Thanks to Spax for the Alpha. Your friendly neighborhood emo squirt bro is co-hosting a new show. Oh, oh, it's just a plug. <laughs> okay, I didn't know you got me, but yeah, shout out to Tyler. I think I did mention that uh, yesterday, but Tyler doing a show with uh, Tom Strachan who... Uh, not, not on the Spags enemy list, but not on the Spags friend list because of the football outsider stuff, but, but still, uh, go check out Tyler doing his first, his first real stream every week for himself on the fantasy sanctuary. But next time I would say for Tom, maybe don't group up with the other idiot writers and fucking submit letters and things and make it impossible for everybody to get paid as people are working behind the scenes <laughs> to get everybody paid. That's what I would say, but you know, it's fine. We move on. We move on when owed fucking $25,000. We don't move on. I'm sure I'll talk about it tomorrow during Best Ball After Dark with Pete. But not that that matters at this point. All right, what are we getting on the way back? I'm not going to fly to a bridge to hang myself for losing a <laughs> over Marshawn Lloyd. It has to be a convenient local bridge. I know, I know, I know. It's okay. He still does great. He does a good job content-wise. I just, you know, that wasn't my fave is all I can say. Uh, 2552 here, man, I think we got to get creative and I'm actually, I'm gonna go a little bit cuckoo crazy. Uh, sure. Justin Herbert could end up in Minnesota. According to vikingsterritory.com. JJ McCarthy could also end up going to Minnesota according to fucking basic logic. So we're going to take JJ McCarthy here and try to get him with Justin Jefferson, whether that works or not. We'll find out either way though. Again, we're covered for multiple outcomes team so far. Uh, Kyler Murray, future Vikings, Justin Herbert and J.J. McCarthy, running back Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, Braylon Allen. So again, little Vikings correlation in here. Uh, Justin Jefferson, of course, that's the big Vikings correlation. We took him on zero RB Friday. Marvin Harrison Jr., D.J. Moore, Keenan Allen, Christian Watson, tight end, Dalton Kincaid, and Brock Bowers. I love the team. Got a sick wide receiver late, but as you guys know, I am very comfortable managing wide receiver late right now. I think there are appreciable values still, and we're going to get some of them, of course, in this draft. Basic logic never makes sense. I trust Vikings territory. Thank you. Thank you. Francis, I, well, I guess you can't do that one anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what, am I going to go underwater for that one? And thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you. Tyler, you're my fave too. That's why I'll still give you the plug even when I have to throw shade at the same time. I have to really just get it, say it for myself more than anything. Now that I've said it, I'll say it again. Justin Fields going at 181. Better price tag than the, than the 160s we sometimes see him going at. Uh, Fields there. I think a fine pick. Fields is another guy in Pete's uh, discrepancies and ADPs video or rankings rather uh, video. Yeah, some people are pretty bullish on Fields. Some people basically think he's a do not draft. I'm a little more do not draft territory personally. If he comes down to like the 200s, I think you're making him as your QB3 play in BBM. I'm okay with that. Uh, for right now though, I just, I don't know. I don't love the bet unless I'm dying at QB. JJ gives me the heebie jeebies. Uh, in a good way, I hope. Oh, wait, J.J. McCarthy? I thought we were talking about Justin Jefferson. Yeah, uh, J.J. McCarthy, I, I like a lot. I'm, I'm a big fan of what he's done. In terms of, like, the athletic testing being better, again, the EPA metrics look fantastic. Dropbacks, wish we had a bigger sample size for sure. Uh, but all the vi all the video guys, like, seem like they're still on them. 
Uh, one thing, actually, I'll make my pick coming up, but I do want to talk about one thing that was in uh, the underdog video because I have been eschewing the virtues of Hayden and Josh's good work over at underdog and how I think their prospect video is really the best in the business that you can put everything together, especially the film plus some of the data. Um, I think they do a good job. Uh, they had one thing that troubled me in their wide receiver rankings that I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, just a pocket here for running backs that I do tolerate. Do I need to go there? I, I do. I need volume, right? I definitely do. You know, Ray Davis had a lot of good visits. I'm obviously deep in the bag for Irving and Estime, but Ray Davis having so many top 30s, probably going for extra cheap. He's going to be my running back pick here. So the Josh and Hayden had ranked Trey Franklin, I think number 11 and number 10 in their wide receiver rankings for the rookies. I, I disagree vehemently. Uh, I think I've been pretty clear about that. Uh, they also had Lad McConkey top five. So our guy, Adam, I'm sure can, can start stroking one <laughs> any moment now he pleases in chat. If he wants to go check out that content. Uh, but I, I think in general, like I get why people are falling in love with a uh, good route running of a guy like Lad. Ultimately, earning targets and being efficient with targets, I think just matters the most. And I will, I'll die on this hill for this year. Like if I'm right about this and they're wrong, uh, you, yeah, look, what are we going to hear about? You're going to hear me talk about it here and there on stream. But ultimately, I feel like this is a take that I'm willing to die on the hill of. I think Troy Franklin is the wide receiver five in this class. I think he's behind Brian Thomas, but I still think he's wide receiver five. And these other guys, I think, are just all a good mix of dudes you can cycle in. I get the elite athleticism, uh, athleticism for A.D. Mitchell, for Xavier Worthy. I, I get it, but I just think performance still matters and performing really well, showing you can be the fulcrum of an offense. Troy Franklin did that. If he's small, he is small. I get it. Um, well, he's thin. He's not small. But you can also you can bulk up. Like You can add some weight. I'm not, I'm not worried about Troy Franklin, and I think it's, it baffles me where he's ranking on that. He didn't have a great combine. He had a good one. Got a perfectly good one. Uh, Tez Walker's still here, who I was thinking about taking with my last pick. So we're going to get our sixth wide receiver in here after really went hard and heavy early on, then dialed back the position because we did hit tight end pretty aggressively. Then we had to go in our running back run. We got six there. Uh, we're taking a lot of rookies here, obviously, but we have probably pinned down the Cowboys starter. So hopefully that gets us through most of this. Will be the hope. Ray Davis had uh well, there was a chart chat here. Ray Davis had a lot of steam early, but died down. I like him. I'm not that huge on him. I do think his video looks better than his analytics did, uh, but it's really for him more the visits at this point. He's been getting visits with a lot of good teams and top 30 visits as well. Like I I think SMA is a better back personally, but if Davis is going to be the one that they're gravitating towards, you just have to try to read the market. Um, so I'm still want to take SMA. Still want to take Bucky. Bucky still had visits with the Texans, the Cowboys. Uh, those would be both tremendous landing spots for him. Uh, but for a Ray Davis, like if he's going to meet, uh, I think I closed the number or the, the window for Walter football. Let me just see real fast. If I have this Ray Davis, Ray Davis has had seven visits. He top 30 with the Cardinals top 30 with the Falcons. Neither spot that great top 30 with Denver top 30 with green Bay, uh, top 30 with Houston. That would be huge. Top 30 with the chargers. That could also be huge. And uh, combine talk with the Bucks, which would be probably not great for Rashad White as well. Uh, Saint Saint Equinemius Saint Brown, Jover for E.T. Perry. No, oh no. The, I mean, they signed. They really are just signing the dog shit receivers. Cedric Wilson <laughs> and that. Uh, not the most exciting signings in the world for sure. Uh, was it Troy Franklin? Yeah, he said he was sick at the combine, and then he ran faster at the pro day. Uh, look, I think he's perfectly fast. He's still running like a 4 4 1 in the combine. And I think he was under 4 4 at his pro day. Uh, but for me, Troy Franklin, I, I don't know. Uh, you can't produce as well as he did and be bad, I think is really the main thing. If he flames out, if he has lands on a bad depth chart, that's a separate thing. But I, I don't think he is. And I still think he's going to go to Buffalo. And I think really, I think that Hayden and Josh will rue. <laughs> I think they're going to fucking rue the day that they put in <laughs> Troy Franklin. A wide receiver alive. And like, really, they'll think about it. If Franklin does go to Buffalo, if I end up being right about this and nobody else is talking about it, really, maybe Bills fans are on BillsTerritory.com. If Troy Franklin goes to Buffalo, the, honestly, the BillsTerritory.com, they're like, we're going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> I think is probably it. But like, really, though, like that would be the win of all wins. If he goes there with that depth chart and, it, and it's just him, uh, I think that'd be great. I think Tank Bigsby is worth an RB7 here. We're just trying to make this room a little bit better. And I know Tank Bigsby, we talked about, uh, almost gave away a field goal every time he was throwing a pass last year with a negative 0.28 EPA or whatever bullshit that was. Um, close to negative three EPA. So basically 
taking three estimated points added every time they targeted him. Um, he wasn't good last year, but they said they want to use him again. Jacksonville wants to take pressure off of ATN. We'll make that bet at pick 211. Every site's got to have a territory website. It's Bill's territory. <laughs> this has got to be the new bit. Every time there's like a fan take, uh, it's just complete fan fiction. We'll go like, ah, oh, yeah, the buff Bill's territory.com reports that uh, Josh Allen going to, apparently there's going to be a trade for Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase reuniting the LSU guys, but with their enemy of Joe Burrow because they're mad at show. Bill's territory.com checking in. Leah Murphy, the new, <laughs> new editor in chief of Bill's territory.com. Theory Franklin of Buffalo, their uh, first round pick. Bill's first round pick is wide receiver. Yes, I think that's what it would be because it would be like pick 26 or something like that, which feels about right to me for Franklin. Um, and again, he's been in there for three visits. They worked him out privately. They talked to him at the combine um, and they had him in for a top 30 visit. Like they haven't had anybody else three sessions with them. Maybe that means that they're just like, we got to really make sure this guy is okay. I don't know why it would be if he's healthy. Uh, so I think that's it. I, the signal to me is too much, but we'll see. If Brian Thomas somehow falls or they could trade for Brian Thomas, like that could fuck everything up because Brian Thomas is going to be a better version, I think, as a, a pro, you know, big bodied guy, uh, then, you know, then Troy Franklin will be, or at least, you know, be perceived as, whereas Franklin's going to have to be like tall tank Dell kind of and have to overcome that a little bit. Uh, three, seven, six, two here. Not the most exciting pocket in the world. Can keep playing the hits, but I actually think with the little bet we have on Arizona, like Demarcus Robinson's not a bad pick here. Not an exciting player by any stretch, but quietly was fantastic last year as a wide receiver three uh, point. No, this is Wandale. And Demarcus Robinson, 0.32 EPA per target last year, a 20% target per out run rate. Uh, 12 a dot 0.5 deep targets a game. Good for a 1.9 EPA per target. He did some nice things in that offense. I, uh, Will it do it? Will it hold again? If they bring in anybody who's like a rookie who's got some juice and they could bring in, like imagine, oh my God, imagine if the Rams added Lad McConkey, actually like another route runner guy who's going to take, pro that would actually be fucking sick. That would hurt Demarcus Robinson pretty bad. But if we go in with what we have now and the Rams haven't seen anybody, the Rams have some of the least top 30 visits. I think they have only five reported, um, at least on the Walter football list. So I don't know, but boy, that, that actually, you want to talk about an outcome that would be fun and would kind of maybe hurt Cooper Cup and Puka a little bit, but putting Lad just another dope route runner in there would be, I think that'd be very fun for them. A Worthy might be fun too, because Worthy is very fast, but kind of a, a better close to the line of scrimmage route runner. That would actually, that'd be a better version of Tutu Atwell for them. I don't know if the Rams are going to do it, but I think that'd be fun. Um, you guys may have, I, I'm going to say luck box. You guys may have uh, stopped into, uh, I think I'm going to do a second draft today. I still have to make up the one. Uh, I don't think this count, the stream with Pete tomorrow counts. So we're going to actually tack on number 54 for me coming up after we finish this one. Zero RB Friday. How can I resist? We'll do two. No meetings today for me. I don't think any pressing business I have to tend to. Let me just make sure my emails are all good. Uh, Pete sent a text saying, ha ha, nice thumb. Thank you, Pete. Um, all right, there we go. Brock, yeah, Brock to Rams. I don't think it'll happen. Brock, Brock going to the Rams shouldn't be a thing. They had, they just paid Colby Parkinson enough money and Davis Allen flashed pretty aggressively. <laughs> Tell Pete nice cock. <laughs> yeah, I'll be sure to do that. Though Pete did uh, in his PO box email today, wrote about the Ninja Creamy, uh, which I have seen Cody Maine tweeting about as well. And I'm very intrigued by, so once, uh, once we have money again in this house from not funding a startup, uh, I will be getting a Ninja Creamy as well because this boy, your boy here loves ice cream and would love it to be protein-filled ice cream. That'd be a big win. There you go, second draft. So that's the dream. <laughs> no Snipe Friday. That's also the dream. Might be, a, might be a silly dream. It is a dream. All right, what do we need here for this last pick? I feel like, I, I mean... It's got to be a wide receiver, I would think. And probably going to be playing the hits at wide receiver as well here. We got a 3772. With how bad I am at running back, I could make the case to add one more running back, but I don't know what CEH, Kamani Vidal, and the gang do.
Mm, all right. I think, uh, yeah, Brendan Rice goes to Joe Buttiger. What? Joe Buttiger, man. <laughs> Just doing enough to make my life slightly inconvenient. Uh, all right. Definitely don't need a third tight end. Don't think I need a QB here. I'm panicking. I'm taking Johnny Wilson. I haven't got enough Johnny Wilson, and I believe in the man. He's too tall, perhaps, to run a full complement of routes, but um, still better than Keon Coleman in every metric that matters. Uh, didn't run enough routes, though. But uh, Kyler Murray, Justin Herbert, J.J. McCarthy at QB, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Jerome Ford, Ty Chandler, Braylon Allen, Ray Davis, Tank Bigsby, Justin Jefferson, Marvin Harrison Jr., D.J. Moore, Keenan Allen, Christian Watson, Tez Walker, Demarcus Robinson, Johnny Wilson at wide receiver. The tight end, Don Kincaid and Brock Bowers. All right, there's draft number one. Let's do some quick plugs, guys, before we hit draft number two. Please subscribe down below. Hit that like button again. Splash play new drafts Monday to Friday at 11 a.m., including the reunion of Pete Mites coming back tomorrow. A drunken draft here on stream to celebrate us hitting some milestones last year, getting the gang back together, followed by best ball after dark. But again, best ball every day here, football every day here. That's what we talk about. Underdog promo code splash on there. Double your deposits, 100 bucks with the promo code splash. Probably my baby getting better sports betting day to change your life in sports betting. Sports betting books, they're happy to rip you off forever. We want that to stop. We want you to get better data in your life to know win rates, to know plus EV bets based off the best market data. So check it out. Probably.com slash subscribe. Also a free trial that I am sure I will leave in the pinned comments down below. And we'll be doing the giveaway of the guest hosting spot on Splash Play on Monday. And of course, uh, Socastic, my pals over there, check them out for yourself. 15% off. I answered some lines for the Masters. Uh, they're still alive. So uh, that's a good sign, but check out Stochastic for yourself. And uh, I guess uh, anything else I can plug? Hey, and any of what drafters too? All right, we could do. Hold on, wait. I clicked the wrong button. Hold on. I'm stuck. I'm stuck at a screen share. Damn it. I'm in a draft room, guys. <laughs> I tried to keep it secret, but I couldn't get out of the screen share thing. So I'm waiting to fill this draft room. Four spots left. Fucking ruin my day if you must. To come into the draft room. But yeah, drafters as well. I'm a good splash. I've not done a new graphic for them because they haven't paid us ad money yet. But join me on this journey here. And game responsibly while we wait for this draft to fill. While we wait for this draft to fill, uh, here's uh, here's me and a dollar bill from the Stochastic Days. It's money time. Oh, it's money time, guys. Here's a shocked Pikachu. Got two spots left, so just get in the fucking room so we can do this. Even if I don't like you, get in the room. And a new egg. Here we go. The halftime show. Me, me showing gifts. <laughs> it's the halftime show here on Splash Play. Help step chat. Spags is stuck. Yeah, my ass is in the dryer. Just poking out. All right, let's see what we got in here. We got our guy fucking Alpha. I've not seen him in a room in a while, so that'll be fun to see what he does. We got Carlos. We got Travioli once again. I think this is fine is in the chat, I believe. Uh, so about half regulars. And unfortunately, it's your RB Friday, so I cannot get a share of Christian McCaffrey here. Do I just do the CD Lamb thing again? I feel like I I always be doing that CD Lamb thing. <laughs> I do whenever I get on Zero RB Friday, and it's Christian McCaffrey in the 101. I keep doing this. Okay, I've seen ship. I've seen this is fine in some of our in my rooms too. So maybe could be both. Hopefully, it'll be both. A ship chaser, nonetheless. All right, three seconds here. Do I betray zero RB Friday? Because I just want to get some McCaffrey shares. Can we do like one RB Friday? <laughs> Can we do one RB as a treat Friday? Uh, I, I hate betraying a bit. I hate betraying a bit. I'm taking Christian McCaffrey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, Adam will allow it. Okay, we're fine. I've betrayed Zero RB Friday, Chris McCaffrey 101. It's fine. People saying CMC. Oh, uh, you better not. I betrayed Rob. I, I can't betray Robert Griffin the third. He's one of the most OGs, one of my most favorites. Uh, Chris McCaffrey 101. I okay. I'm just here. Oops, I gotta play the gif. I'm a piggy. Oh, I can't imagine a world where the chalk running back doesn't do the exact same thing he did last year. That's gonna, that's always gonna happen. Oh, 101, Christian McCaffrey. I'm the investor bias. The thing that happened that we saw happen last year, it's gonna happen forever, right, guys? Daniel Kahneman, the psychologist, <laughs> tells us that. I know that now. I know that. I know the investor psychology that we're all fucking prey to. And I'm prey to it once again with Christian McCaffrey. 
I already had, that's true. I did have one zero RB team already and it was an aggressive one. <laughs> I didn't go RB till round 10. So that's right. I paid off the bit. I paid off the bit. Oh no. Alex B. Keaton. He's <laughs> Alex is in a lot of our drafts and doesn't chat very often. Comes out of the woodwork. It's like, <laughs> call me a Judas. And my MAGA hat. Oh, oh, make, make <laughs> M Z R B G A, <laughs> which is, would not be as catchy. Bazurgba. Uh, Bindles has the gifts too. Of course, if you're a Splash Play member here, if you hit that join button down below, you too can have all the sweet gifts that I deploy here on stream at your disposal. Of course, custom badges. I pull up your chats a lot more too. So uh, please hit that join button down below if you want to support the show. Your support does matter. And of course, also access the Spags rankings that come out after the NFL draft. Because look, I can't be asked. <laughs> I can't be asked to do it and keep up with it until we are in BBM mode. But for BBM, Spags rankings, including ones you can use on Underdog if you want. Though I assume you're still going to use Legendary Upside. But I do think it's going to be worth a read. I started to do some of my blurbing um, for every player, basically in the top. I mean, every player in the top 250 is what I did last year. And I think that's what I'm going to do again. Um, so I think it's fun. And of course, the EPA metrics I look at too from Sports Info Solutions. I throw them in as well. I'll be coming up in, I guess, two weeks. I'll be fun. Fun to produce content again, even if it is lo-fi coming through Discord. Daffy, Daffy Duck is flaccid. Uh, here, here's Daffy Duck just, just jerking that, that sad chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that lib sausage just jerk. No, oh, we're gonna scare off the new people watching. The 69 viewers live. You gotta be comfortable with the Daffy Duck dick joke. Is there a guy in the first round that you just avoid unless forced to take him? People aren't gonna like this. I don't think I take much Brees. Um, I just think that the bet on him is a bet on the Jets, and I don't want to make a bet on the Jets that much. I, I think that's one of my takes that I need to think about more, though, because like I'm low on Bijan too. I have a hard time taking somebody who's not Christian McCaffrey at this point. I'm taking RBs at the turn a little bit, taking RB here a little bit more. In this point, I just want to get my first receiver. Like if I'm not getting McCaffrey, I think I'm walking away thinking I don't want the silver medalist and I probably need to adjust that approach. Uh, but I think for me, it is Brees Hall. Like I, I know the talent's there, but I think his biggest games last year came in a really stupid offense that's not going to be a reflection of what it is this year. And I think too, it's just going to be down pace. I don't think it's going to be an up pace offense. If they add a Malik Neighbors, if they add a Brock Bowers, it's not great for everybody there, including Brees Hall. Um, the offense will look better. Brees maybe gets in more touchdowns through that. But they're not going to be a team, with, especially with Sala as the coach and Hackett as the offensive coordinator still. It's like they're not going to be a team where it's like, oh, yeah, they're going to really throw it deep and, and sling it around the park. It's like they're going to be a defense-minded team that's going to keep things low scoring. And then you also now have to feed three receivers. And Mike Williams, who just got a lot of money. Like, I don't think it's a great scene. So... That's how I feel about it, but there we go. So you just seem not to be able to draft Hall. I don't think it's it. <laughs> Davy Duck is trying. Nothing's happening. Look, you know, you can jerk. <laughs> you can still reach the outcome with a soft one if you work hard enough. If you believe in yourself. Watch the stream while Porky pigging it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, is that stuttering profusely while popping out of a wall? Not worried about 30-year-old, but it's just it's not about just 30-year-old Mike Williams. It's about the overall picture of them adding in more things that take targets away, that take more yardage away, that take more opportunity away, and an offense that's probably going to benefit the most by playing it close to the vest. Like Aaron Rodgers also was not a great fantasy QB the last time he played a full year. Is that going to change with this you know non-progressive, not the most exciting coaching staff? I don't think so. So that's my concern about it. But you know, look, I get it. Brees Hall's really talented. I understand the bet. I think it's just more. I believe in some of the situational stuff a little bit more. Like, I don't know. What situation would you rather have? Brees Hall or Saquon? I think, I, I think I'd rather have Saquon's situation. I believe in the talent. I, I Look, I, you guys know I hate Saquon. Like, I think he's not the most talented guy in the world. We got big paid. He's on the Eagles. Like, I think those are things that are pretty solid for him. Uh, all right. What can we do here? At the turn, obviously two picks. Yeah, that's, that's how that works, <laughs> I would say. Uh, all right. I mean, we're taking neighbors as one of them. You guys know that by now. Uh, Chris Olave, I think it's a big old bag of dicks. Nico Collins at pick 25 doesn't feel awful. Mike Evans getting older. I probably shouldn't call Olave a big old bag of dicks. That's, that's unfair to him. He's like a moderately sized bag of dicks. Uh, what was Olave last year? I'm looking at Olave's numbers. 
Yeah, Lave 0.21 EPA per target, 26% target per outrun, pretty good there. 1.8 deep targets a game, but a negative 0.4 EPA on them. That, that's got to bounce back, you would think, because he is a good downfield receiver. So maybe that's the issue I have with Olave is that he just really underperformed last year. And because I like I watched enough Olave games, and I know he and Carr just did not click until maybe the last couple of weeks of the season. Uh, but yeah, for Olave, I think that's my blocker is that he just didn't do the thing that he's supposed to be good at last year. But, you know, we'll see. Carr's the main problem there. I don't have the catchable ball rate for Olave, but he only caught 25% of his deep balls. So actually, I could quickly see what Carr's deep rate was. Carr. Derek Carr and throws of 20 plus air yards last year. He was actually good. He had a 0.7 EPA. I mean, that's not great, but like it's not bad. 0.7 EPA, 61% catchable ball rate is a little bit better than average. I think it's on Olave. I mean, it's about their connection not being there, but like Carr is not bad. Like that's the thing that um, I talked about last year with Deontay Johnson versus George Pickens. Deontay Johnson bounced back enough, but it's the same awesome offense environment. So Pickens performs well as an EPA outlier. De uh, Deontay Johnson the year before last, one of the worst receivers in football in terms of those metrics. They, they shored him up, changed his route tree this year. So he looked a little bit better. But like when you see those things, it's the same offensive environment. Like what's wrong? Carr's not bad. Like the, the EPA that he had on deep balls is like, you know, it's not as good as some other guys, but he's in line with, well, let's see. He's way better than Sam Howell. Sam Howell is a 0.15 EPA on deep throws. Uh, Patrick Mahomes last year. Is that right? Patrick Mahomes only had a 0.01 EPA on deep throws last year. 30% completion rate, 48% catch rate, 41% on target rate, catchable ball rate. Wow, that's... All right, so Derek Carr was objectively not that bad. If we're going to say Mahomes was not good at all at deep throws. I, point being, I don't think it's all on Olave, I, but it's it's not all on Carr either. They looked variance. I agree that visually they didn't click. I think that's the one thing I could say that I did observe, but it's odd to see Carr again. He's getting the ball where it had to be for the most part and getting it in position better than QBs that we think are good. I don't think it's all on Carr. Yeah, he really got changed and I think kind of got fucked around. Uh, I mean, like the offense to me is not doing any favors for what we want to see out of Mahomes, but he won the Super Bowl. So I don't, I don't know if that's going to change. Um, can I just point out the Pickett's price ridiculously cheap? I'll stand on that. I don't think so. Uh, that was another one. I don't want to keep mentioning Pete's video, but I was listening on on my my daily two-hour walk I'm trying to do now to get myself back into running mode. Um, yeah, so like basically the ADPs right now for Pickens, a lot of the rankers feel like is like way too high. I don't know that I agree with that. I do think there's been a lot of signal from Pittsburgh trying to get in a wide receiver to take some pressure off. And I think Pickens right now is priced as though like there isn't going to be somebody else out there when it could be not only somebody else out there who is good, but it could be somebody who's like really good potentially if they do trade for an Ayuk. Uh, so I think for Pickens, I'm okay with the price tag, but I'm a Pickens guy and I've not taken him very much at that ADP. I think when I've taken him, it's been a little bit later. Been a bit shocked everyone's down on Pickens. I get it. I, I think for me, it's most that they're going to bring in somebody else. And Arthur Smith, we've seen, cannot sustain a wide receiver one. So, like, that's the biggest fear I have. Is it going to be like that this year? Um, especially, you know, with Russ slash Fields out there, I would say probably not going to be exactly one to one. But I, I think that's a, that's definitely a concern point, and it should be a concern point of just like if they bring in somebody else there, that really diminishes what I think the ADP right now of Pickens reflects, which is him being the unquestioned wide receiver one. Hyper fragile build from the 12 spot. See from, I mean, we'll see what spot five does. Like it, it's a hyper fragile build. If you stop drafting running backs, if you keep going after them, <laughs> then I think uh, you're just doing bad drafting. Like sometimes people do though. I did like, I feel like if he to me had stopped at Bijan and Devon Achan, I think that would have been a fun start. I know Josh Jacobs could be tempting. I would have taken probably Cooper cup over him there. Tank is his wide receiver one though. Not bad. We'll see what Rackham Willie does. So awful fucked it with Hurts. Yeah, it's tough to start your wide receiver run after round four, but it's tough to start your wide receiver run late in general, but especially around at that point. All right, see what we're going to do here. Picks coming up, two at the turn. Would I take Drake London's production from last year for Pickens for this year at this price? I per Yeah, no, definitely not. Definitely not.
Drake London was an abomination last year. I don't even think he gave you enough spike weeks to really matter. All right, so we've got McCaffrey and Neighbors. Obviously, this is not the full fun stack that we would have liked to have gotten a couple weeks ago, but I am going to go CJ Stroud for one of these picks. I'm not going to select him yet. Zay, pick it. Uh, Zay does not do it for me too much. I feel like Baltimore's had enough signal about uh, potentially taking somebody else. <sighs> do I just make the bet on Pickens because we're talking about him? Is that a sign that I should take Pickens? I'm going to take Pickens. I'll still, I'll, I'll buy it on the upside. I've got enough safe flowers. I do think psychologically I have been low on Pickens this year. So I'm going to get a share here because sometimes I do believe in the kismet of like, you guys mentioned something. I'm not thinking about it. I need to think about it a different way. So I do sometimes, it does affect my draft sometimes and how I approach it, in particular the player selection. Team so far, CJ Shroud, Christian McCaffrey, Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens. Don't know that this team is particularly unique right now. Hopefully we can find a way to make it a little bit more so later on. But that's it. You want the Baltimore stack without the QB? I wanted Stroud too much there. I'm low on Stroud right now, and I want to get some shares because as I've talked about, I think Stroud could be in line for a historical passing year, and I don't want to be out on that. But that, a fair take entirely by, by Mac there. Well, think about Pickens is he should get a QB upgrade. So those QBs were historically bad last year. Yeah, Pickens did well with Mason Rudolph throwing in the ball, uh, you know, at portions of that period before they completely stopped throwing the ball entirely. Um, and again, he won in week 17. He was on uh, Farid's winning lineup in BBM. So I think Pickens is fine. I just, I think that he comes down to the 60s, if not maybe early 70s, if they add somebody of note. If they add a lad McConkey, he, I think he would come down a little bit. If they add... Well, Pittsburgh is like brought in everybody in the world for visits. So like, I don't have a lean on who they're going to go with, but it does just seem to me like they're bringing somebody else, a wide receiver. And I think just Pickens is naturally going to fall. Obviously that'll be, you know, not during the big board, but I think it'll make it harder for Pickens to pay off his price tag in an Arthur Smith offense. If they bring in anybody who's like pretty good. And in this class, they could bring in a lot of guys who are pretty good. If not somebody who's great. And then you still have the trade options out there too. There's enough for me that worries me. Chat rats unite. Okay, I know where you're. <laughs> Here's the chat rats. Uh, thing about the Steelers that Arthur got to get Darnell and a problem on its targets. Darnell Washington breaking 80 yard screens like John Smith last year. Uh, it's in the cards, guys. If you're watching live, by the way, uh, please do subscribe down below. Hit that like button and splash play now in that march to 4k subs to 5k subs to 10k subs. We can't do it without you guys joining here. And of course, uh, hit the like button as well that helps us get seen by more people. Best thing you can do to tell the YouTube algorithm that we deserve some love and deserve some shine. Uh, so please do that. And of course, if you are subscribed, you'll get the Pete and me stream coming up tomorrow at 8 p.m. The reunion of me and my old pal, one of my better pals in terms of content. I think I've done more stream hours. It's probably him and Josh, maybe Greg at Stochastic, and those guys. But uh, yeah, in general, very excited to be doing it. Of course, there'll be booze. I got to go to the I got to go to the store actually tomorrow to get probably some golden monkeys. Go hard, go hard in the paint. I don't want to spoil the bit either, but uh, we are going to draft together tomorrow. And what we're going to do is uh, every time we disagree on a pick, uh, we're going to have to drink. So that's <laughs> how that goes. And I do know Pete, as he mentioned in the PO box email, and it's talk right now. So uh, we're going to try <laughs> going to try to get him in the tank pretty early, I guess, by disagreeing repeatedly. Though I don't think we're going to disagree too much early. Probably more so later on would be my guess. So you'll both die. Like I can go. I, I've been drinking. I've been drinking a lot of Modelo Negros because uh, my father-in-law had gotten them for his car mechanic because I guess the mechanic loved Modelo Negros. And then the guy left the mechanic shop and like, you know, nobody knew how to contact him. So he just had this case, I guess like a more than a case of Modelos. So we've just been drinking those for the past couple weeks. And honestly, they've grown on me. Modelo Negros, like a very nice, I would say almost like a wine-like beer where you get your one and you're like, all right, I don't need to necessarily keep going with this. But if you're in the vibe, you can keep going. Shout out Modelo Negros. About to go Carlos Boozer on the bruise. <laughs> Bindles is throwing out hot catchphrases right now. Modelo and Dose are my go-to. Yeah, Golden Monkey is my go-to generally because that's got the highest ABV while still being, I think, a tasty beer. If I could afford it, I would get Delirium Tremens every day. That's my favorite, like high alcohol, but goes down smooth, like, you know, like a nicer Coors Light is what I would say. Um, but, you know. Beer's beer. I'll drink whatever if it's got an ABV on it. You know, <laughs> as long as it's not a sour. And even that, I've, I've had some sours and I do. Sours to me taste like somebody threw up in their mouth and then gave you a drink. And we're like, hey, have a great time. And I go, no, thank you, sir. 
Stella was my beer in college, and I've never recovered from that. Because I feel like at that point, Stella was like almost exotic back when I was at USC. Um, same thing for Yingling, too. And then I learned later on in life, it's like, oh, Yingling's just a fucking Pittsburgh working class beer. It's like, oh, that kind of ruins <laughs> kind of ruins the allure of Yingling that sounds maybe vaguely Asian. Like, I don't know. Sour better than I, FF Doom. No, no. I know a lot of people like sours. One of my best friends, big sour guy, but no, no. I much prefer IPAs. Both the potency, again, the alcohol. Like, what are we doing? We're drinking to get a buzz going. I want a higher ABV beer if I can get it. I don't want to just be burning calories just to fucking be sober. Like, that's personally how I feel about it. Um, and then, you know, IPAs, I just, I, I like the kick. I think when I was younger, it was I had to grow into it for sure. But it is one of those things where you talk yourself into it. Biddles doesn't drink. Wow. You would have given me full Bindles, like with the beard, full craft beer guy vibes, which I have too. Weed over booze, I agree. I mean, but you know, weed is more of a, a stabilizer <laughs> than anything. All right, we have a 1130 here. Nothing leaping out correlation wise. You know what? Let's let's reunite the old Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's get Deontay in here too. I think he's still an okay pick at this point. Deontay Johnson will be one of my picks. And I think we know who the other one's going to be. I, I just, I'm so in the bag for Brock Bowers. I hope our guy Adam is going to be proud. But Brock Bowers, again, elite tight end here. We're doing it. I'm going to be 30% Brock Bowers by the time that the big board closes, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Uh, let's give the team a read here because we did just make our two picks on the turn. CJ Shroud, Christian McCaffrey at running back, our one running back so far. Uh, we did the RB draft the first draft, and now we had to take McCaffrey at the 101. Wide receiver, we got Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, a wide receiver. And at tight end, we got Brock Bowers. Have you seen me in a draft without Brock Bowers? <laughs> it's like, if I don't get Brock Bowers, I go, just fuck this position, man. I'm just not going to get a tight end until later. So I, <laughs> I cannot help Brock Bowers. Cock Bowers, okay. With the Omega weed over, all the boys are weed over booze. All right, fair enough. I think that's going to be more of a Gen Z take too. Like Gen Z doesn't drink as much now, uh, apparently, is like the the big thing. The Gen Z overall is like kind of fucked up. Like I don't, I'm sure we have some Gen Z in the chat. But like Gen Z doesn't have sex as much, doesn't drink as much. Uh, they do smoke weed, but do it, you know, I, I guess more responsibly. Uh, but they're also like all fucking weird and like don't like going out and being sociable. <laughs> like Gen Z has gotten the worst of everything with the pandemic. I feel bad for those kids. Like. Can't imagine missing like my freshman year of college, my sophomore year of college for a pandemic, having to do the virtual learning and all that. So I, I, I have a lot of sympathy for Gen Z, even though they are little like anime watching weirdos. <laughs> That's how I perceive a lot of them. Gen Z is depressed and sad. Need to get that out. Yeah, I mean they just need to kind of go have fun. They need to go blow off some steam. They need to get their groove back, like how Stella did back in the day. If it wasn't Bowers, we'd have known there was something wrong. Like you were signaling <laughs> you were being held hostage. Man, I just, I got to tell you guys, I, nothing, one of my favorite takes, and the AR take uh, that I had last year, obviously is the one I dug my heels on the most, felt great to be right about that. My favorite take though is like how a lot of sharp people out there were like, a rookie tight end could never hit. They just, they just don't hit. They can't do it. They're not capable of scoring fantasy points. Don't draft them. And I dug my heels in on every fucking turn for all of these guys from day one and said that that class last year was, I think the equivalent of like this wide receiver class, maybe a little bit worse. This wide receiver class is like, I think going to be legendary, but this, that tight end class was like really good and had a bunch of starters there. And all of them added some value, like Musgrave, Mayer, they didn't get there enough. Uh, Musgrave in particular for being hurt was the biggest flaw for him. Uh, but rookie tight ends, man. I just, I, I think that they are being slept on too much. And as the NFL gets closer and closer, just being flag football, like tight ends, I think are going to be there and going to be important. And then you saw the meta game too of like, it was winning the Super Bowls. It's Travis Kelsey. He was in the Super Bowls. Dallas Goddard, even though Dallas Goddard was not himself this year, you know, like that's still a player that was there and, and mattered. Um, yeah, I don't know. Kittle, you know, Kittle matters too. Uh, is 95 Gen Z? I, I think so, because I'm a millennial, but I'm like, you know, in the earlier part of millennials. And I think it's like a 10-year stretch, maybe longer. Somebody else will know. Musgrave and Kraft combined. Yo, that's the thing is like, people think that Kraft is like a good prospect, and I think he's fine. But Musgrave is like a completely different character in terms of what he can do at tight end. And, you know, Kraft is fine. Like, he's kind of a low A dot, can block a good amount, can do the stuff kind of tight end. Whereas Musgrave can be like a downfield game changer that doesn't exist very much at tight end. Besides, you know, Laporta, he got used a little bit like that for Detroit. But, yeah, to me, you know, tight end last year, even the guys that didn't hit, 
I think can hit this year. Uh, and you know, the signing class being not that good besides Brock probably helps that out a little bit more too. 95 is a millennial. I'm, oh, they'll call it geriatric millennial. <laughs> I want to hear that. But they do call pregnancies for women over 35 or 35 or older geriatric pregnancies. So I guess it would only be fair if I were a geriatric millennial, but I don't want to hear that. I, you know, I do. I drink enough water and moisturize. <laughs> We're okay. All right, we got two picks coming up here in our 1141 build. This is a zero RB build, so we do have to kind of keep that, that core hypothesis in mind here. Do I really want to take the rising Curtis Samuel? Ugh, I don't I don't think so. No bets I need to stack up right now. I'm going Trey Benson again. I'm low on him right now. I want to be there a little bit more as it does seem like it's firming up that he'll be, you know, probably RB2. It's, it's looking like it'll be Jonathan Brooks RB1 in this draft class, but RB2 is perfectly fine and can still hit a nut landing spot. And I think I'm a little bit low right now on Jameson Williams. I'm definitely low on Curtis Samuel, but I don't want to buy his rise right now. So I think his rise is kind of artificial. So I'm going to go Jameson Williams here as my fifth wide receiver. This team so far is a one, two, five, one. We got CJ Stroud, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Brenson, uh, Malik neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, the Pittsburgh boys reunited only on this team. Jameson Williams, a wide receiver and then a tight end. We got Brock Bowers. I think this is a, I feel it. I feel it in my, my heart and my soul. Whenever I take RB early, how it just, the wide receiver room is off center enough for me that I don't love it, but I still like the team works well for me. And I think we're going to get some upside at receiver. And obviously, you know, for, for running back for Christian McCaffrey, like we can't really go wrong there. If, if we get fucked by Christian McCaffrey, everybody's getting fucked by Christian McCaffrey. So that's the bet to make. Generation Alpha is 2013 to present. Where, yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, I know my, I know Luca, my my child, Generation Alpha, being born in uh, 2022. Gen X barely. I could sense that vapor. I could sense your cynicism coming through the screen. Samuel over JMO all day. I just think so. For Samuel, the issue I have is that right now he's being drafted like he's going to be the lead wide receiver for Buffalo. Like this is the part with the markets that I think is the key thing that I look at a little bit more closely, where it's like. Jamison Williams, maybe they draft somebody else. You know, there is that vacancy for Josh Reynolds targets, but I think they're just going to let JMO get a shot, see what he can do. Whereas Curtis Samuel, like the expectation is they're going to bring in at least one guy who's coming in with more draft capital for the team, higher pedigree. Samuel had a good contract though, so I'm not going to totally poo poo him. But I, the assumption is like if they get Brian Thomas, if they get Troy Franklin, if they get two of those guys or like Troy and Ladd, like what some combo of the top receivers. It's not going to be as good of an ADP for Curtis Samuel. And I think people are buying him right now on this, like, oh, he's, well, he's Buffalo's lead receiver. And that's like the main thing. I think with markets right now, they're a little bit weird. It's like they immediately, when there's a vacated target share, they give the entire target share to whoever's left in the roster. And they don't think, oh, who else is going to be added that then knocks that down. And that's made Curtis Samuel come up 50 spots. I mean, it, it's, it's egregious to me. But I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Like, I think that Samuel can hit but it's just, he's not going to be like wide receiver one hitting. Rather take stabs on rookies. It's a better bet. That's, you know, that's the hope. And Jameson Williams going into year three, but really more like he's kind of a year two breakout guy with the injuries and the suspension. Uh, I think he's in range to break out. And we saw him start to make some strides last year. Analytically, look, he was a fucking bag of dicks. Like I think I've talked about that enough. Uh, where he disappointed me last year in terms of not making any leaps, though. I wasn't huge on him, but he did end the year with a 0.22 EPA per target, 19% uh, target per out run rate, 15.7 dot, one deep target a game for a not great 0.2 EPA, but that can get better. At least it's positive. I think he's got a chance. Samuel uh, will make your lineup a couple of weeks, four tops. I I think I think if you have like a shitty wide receiver core, like Samuel can give you 10 to 15 some weeks, and that's probably going to make your team. But like, that's not really what I want. Like I want guys that can give me 30. And I like, I don't think Samuel's going to have 30 in his bag. Uh, he did have pretty close to that though at Washington last year. So maybe I'm poo-pooing him too much, but I think that was kind of a unique situation. And I also think too, like Josh Allen's going to rely on Shakir a little bit more. Like Josh Allen has been for his entire career, a very big chemistry guy and getting the chemistry going with people. And he did get it going with Kincaid last year, but he still, you know, had it more with other guys on that team. And like Cole Beasley, remember him bring them, bring him back. It's like, cause that was Josh Allen's little guy who he knew would be in the spot. They had, they knew each other inside and out. Shakir is now going into year three. Like he's the, the vet in that wide receiver room. 
who knows what he's doing that, you know, with Josh Allen. So I think it's not great for Samuel either. He can get there, but you know, it's not great for him. Curtis Samuel, that ADP is assuming he could be peak Cole Beasley. There we go. Talk about a lot of Cole Beasley chatter today. As a foremost AR truther, what do you think about healthy Jelani Woods fits in within this year? I honestly would not take much Jelani Woods. They really want Brock Bowers at 15. I don't think they want him enough to trade up for him, but they really want him. Um, they still have Will Mallory, who actually was pretty good last year. Mallory, very small sample size stuff, but he had a 0.2 EPA per target, 22% target route run rate. He's not bad. Ogletree, I think, is clear of his domestic violence stuff, so he might still be in the mix. Uh, I don't know for sure about that. So either way, like Jelani is just not going to run a full complement of routes. Um, and he also wasn't even like fantastic the year before last when he was actually healthy. He was just a big bodied guy had a few touchdowns. Like the EPA metrics didn't do it for me. Uh, so that's how I feel about Jelani. I think that his role is very tenuous and like, I wouldn't go out of my way to get him. But if you need a third tight end in the 20th round, then then yeah, go for it. Just wouldn't go crazy on it. I'd rather have Shakir over Samuel. I agree. I agree. Get Shakir being a 0.8 per target EPA guy and actually having a lot of volume, that's not a fucking joke. Like that's that's a legit thing to point to for him that he created a lot of value and he was on the field. And I think, you know, from what I sense from the Bills and what they've done historically, I think they are a team that is, you know, a little more analytically tuned to similar analytics to what I look at, which is all about, you know, the efficiency and all that. And, you know, Diggs was an outlier in those. And when they got him, he continued to be more of an outlier. Uh, Gabe Davis was still kind of an analytics outlier, even though, you know, per play, you can certainly question the value there. Um, all right, we're on the clock here. And all this talk about Khalil Shakir, I'm just taking Khalil Shakir as my wide receiver six. I can keep going at running back, and I am going to go with my second pick. But for this one, uh, we are going Khalil Shakir's way. And then, oh, shit, I guess I should take Dalton Schultz, huh? Oh, I'm fucking myself here. All right, I'm taking Dalton Schultz. We're going to have to make it up. Here. But you know, we have Christian McCaffrey. We got Trey Benson who's going to get a good outcome. We're okay. One, two, six, two here. CJ Shroud, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Benson. We're really working our RB capital pockets aggressively by not going back on that round, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, and Khalil Shakir at wide receiver. Now tight end Brock Bowers and Dalton Schultz, who correlates with CJ Stroud. Uh, that is our pick there. With estimating around 190 since the combine was your ownership percentage of the combine move you off him. It did move me off. Uh, my overall numbers on him. Let me see if I can just refresh to check that. I'm still at 18.5% estimate. So I, I'm willing to make the bet, but it wouldn't be a 30% bet for me. Uh, he and Bucky Irving both I've come down on, but I still think if they get in the right situation, like estimate in particular, he did combine meet with Buffalo. So like he didn't get any top 30 visits. That spooks me a lot about estimate, but he did have combine meetings with a lot of interesting teams. One of them being Buffalo if he gets goal line work for Buffalo, estimate can salvage the exposure that I have him right now. Um, same thing for Bucky. If he goes to the Cowboys or Houston, even if he's like part of two rookies going to Dallas, I think he'd be okay. Uh, Bucky can salvage as well, but I am down on both guys because the RAS testing wasn't there. And then, you know, Benson has moved ahead. Brooks being healthy, he's moving ahead. This build makes sense for guys like Shipley and Labe late. Interesting, interesting. I'm not opposed to Labe. Again, Labe's had some interesting places to talk this week. Uh, he's been seen by the Bucks. Uh, I previously talked about him going into the Saints, which would really submarine Kendra Miller's value. Um, he also was in with the Bears uh, for a top 30 visit. So uh, that could be, a, again, a really tough one for that backfield. Roshan, I think, would get the most hurt by that, uh, but would be potentially really good for Labe to be in that offense, especially with Caleb. Like, Caleb is the kind of guy that can use his mobility to set up a check down, which is not the same as a lot of mobile QBs where – once they're running, they're going. Like, they're just a fucking roadrunner. They're going to hit it, and they're going to go. Caleb will use it to set things up. We'll, like, avoid and, and be able to run, but then he'll take advantage of the fact that linebackers start to creep up, try to stop him, and then set up a guy like Labe. So that actually, like, is a very viable outcome. If That would be bad for my Roshan bags, too. But Roshan I've also been out on since Swift went there. But taking more estimate now that he's fallen. He's never going to run into four fours. Yeah, I think the thing that spooks me is that like I would have thought that coaches would find his film more appealing, and it does seem like they are uh, liking Ray Davis more, or at least you know relative to draft capital, they're bringing in Ray Davis more visits. As we talked about, seven top thirty visits to Ray Davis is kind of crazy when Estime's had zero, so that's where I get spooked a little bit. But yeah, maybe Estime has a promise from somebody. Like that is a thing that the NFL does less than the NBA, but it does exist. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, 
something weird with estimating, but uh, the athletic testing being bad, I think was the, the first bad sign for him not moving up. If he had crushed at the combine and had like an elite RAS, I think that maybe we're talking about him, you know, being in that mix to at least be the third back off the board, if not competing for the one, two spot, but he just wasn't a good enough athlete, which sucks. Cause he, he film wise looks like a tremendous athlete, but I worry he's going to be higher pedigree Dwayne McBride, but I, I don't know. That's a fair worry. Fair thing about Caleb from watching film. A lot of young QBs put their eyes down when they scramble, but Caleb is always looking to make a play. Yeah, that's again, that's the thing. Keeping your eyes up. Like he and Jaden Daniels do that pretty well. Jaden obviously is going to run it a little bit more, but Jaden still will keep his eyes downfield. And if there's an opportunity to get the ball out uh, before he's getting to the line of scrimmage, like he's going to try to sling it too. Uh, two traits that I love a lot. Uh, Drake may, I think, you know, not dissimilar though, less pronounced in terms of how good he is with it. Uh, but yeah, I think that is a skill and a trait you want to see. And, you know, being afraid of the contact too, or being unafraid of contact, like Jane Daniels takes some monster hits to the point where that's maybe a point of concern. Caleb is the unafraid of hits too. And he's built a little bit stockier. Like I think at least visually you feel more confident in his constitution. Whereas Jaden, I get people being like, Oh, he's too thin. Could be a problem. All right, let's give the team a read before the turn here. We have a one, two, six, two. So we still need to get at least one more QB. Probably good on tight end. We have CJ Stroud, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Benson, Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, Khalil Shakir, Brock Bowers, and Dalton Schultz. So we have the Houston stack. What else can we take stack wise? We can take Russell Wilson. We could take Bryce Young for free. Uh, we could take Jared Goff is already gone. Yeah, nothing obvious stack wise right now. All right, two picks coming up. Come on, call calm as you like. That's a nice name. We, we need more peaceful names on underdog. Less violent ones. No Lyle Kittenhouses. More, more calm as you like. Deep breath. <sighs> calm as you like. Uh, two picks. Okay, so I was actually thinking about doing something weird, like taking Kirk Cousins, <laughs> but we're not going to do that now. Oh, I've been so low on Blake Corum. Is it a day for him? No, it's a day for Zach Charbonnet first. Let's do that. We're going to get Zach Charbonnet in. Can I stack Cousins with anything late? It would have to be like Cousins with Rondale Moore. It's not the most exciting to go with. I think this is a time for Drake May. We're going to take him unstacked right now, but I think we're going to try to play the assumption he goes to New England, and we can get most of the New England guys for free late. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, the team after those two picks, CJ Stroud and Drake May. Running back, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Benson, uh, Zach Charbonnet. So we need to add some running backs for sure. Wide receiver, Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, and Khalil Shakir. At tight end, we've got Brock Bowers and Dalton Schultz. I think the team works. Um, I think that... Maybe not the best value, I think, in this room. I didn't get a lot of value, but I guess that's to be expected in a room where we have like half the room being regular, so all good. And yes, please slap that like button. Please do that. And that's a good point. Charbonnet and NFC West correlation. I'll take that. But yes, please hit that like button, guys. As you heard, again, the chat, always appreciate them reminding me here, but uh, Splash Play trying to grow every day. Your likes matter a lot. Your subscribes matter a lot. And of course, if you're subscribed, you'll be getting me and Pete tomorrow here at 8 p.m. Eastern time here doing the drunk draft. We've owed you guys for a while, so that'll be fun. Tune in tomorrow. Of course, promo code Splash on Underdog as well, and promo code Splash on probably get better sports betting data in your life. Transact on bets easily again for 10 minutes a day. I had a 22% ROI last month just from doing the bets that I do for content every day. Imagine what you could do if you actually were paying attention and checking throughout the hours. Like that's uh, unlimited ceiling there, and you will change your life in the world of sports betting uh, with probably right now. So check it out and pin comment as well. Seven day free trial. Well, as Leo McLaughlin goes, who I remain not that in on. Feel like Sean Payton kind of got sick of him as the toy down the home stretch. Snap count went down, usage went down, but it's a new year. Smajic P. Ryan, a year older. Javante Williams, who knows? And Denver bringing in rookie backs potentially. So uh, I think there's a lot of questions about Denver's backfield right now. Thank you, Steph. I appreciate you. Shout out to Steph being here for the whole show. Girl Steph does a great job. The ship chasing guys, doing some content for them. I don't know if you have any other plugs, Steph, but. Always glad to see the women in the industry who really, you know, put in the work for sure, especially. Steph puts in the work. 
Marshawn Lloyd, pick 152. Does he have any interesting top 30 visits? Let me see Marshawn. Marshawn Lloyd, combine visit with, this is going to be, with Tampa Bay. Marshawn Lloyd saw the Titans for a top 30 visit. And Marshawn Lloyd saw the Saints for a top 30 visit. Ooh, boy. That's, this is not this is not good for Kendra. Not, not good that they had in Labe and Lloyd, both of whom would be, would do things that Kendra does slightly better. Kind of wonder if they're not in on Kendra. Which the usage patterns kind of showed last year. He started to get the mix a little bit more down the home stretch. And he had a few big plays. I thought he showed enough that you give him a shot. Lloyd deserves also more top 30 visits. Lloyd is actually very good. He's past the athletic profile stuff. Great analytics. Uh, Lloyd, to me, I think based off of what we know with the athletic stuff and just how NFL teams value it, I think Lloyd should be probably the RB3. Oh, Daniel Jeremiah said, okay, so I'm normally not the biggest Daniel Jeremiah. And actually, no, I'm, I'm less of an Ian Rathbore guy. Daniel Jeremiah said he wouldn't be shocked if uh, Marshawn Lloyd was RB1 off the board. That would be interesting to me. Guessing Kendry didn't show much in practice. He was also hurt all year, which, you know, availability, being your best ability kind of thing, maybe. It's not great. Oh, Steph over at Legendary Upside, too. Boy, he's Pat's just getting the whole crew together there. It's like he's pull, building a heist team. But yes, Legendary Upside work for Steph, too. Corm Red behind the best offensive line of football is not very explosive. He tested okay in the combine stuff. I thought his short cone drill kind of things were okay. Um, still think the analytics, like he really regressed in year two from you know me looking at him last year and thinking he should come out this year. He'd be a great running back in this class. Uh, this year, everything went down. Again, I think the other guys in the backfield look a little bit better. Uh, to me with Corum, I think he can land an outcome that's okay. But not being a great athlete, not being that big, uh, the production going down, his age going up. These are all not great things for Corum in terms of how I view him. Yeah, Lloyd to Titans would be a disaster for everybody. <laughs> I think it would be a disaster for all three guys there because I think he's he's a healthier back who's got a little bit more juice than Ty J Spears. Tony Pollard is going down and he's not like he might not be as good as Ty J, let alone Marshawn Lloyd, but he's going to get the work because he got the contract. So it'd be a pretty bad scene for the Titans, I would say. All right, pick coming up here. Two picks in the turn. Two, three, six, two. So we could still use some running back help. And frankly, Antonio Gibson, ambiguous backfield, number 12 on the Patriots. I don't know if that matters so much, but it's odd that he's going to be number 12. Why are we not, is Tom Brady not getting retired? Didn't he, like, anyway. Uh, Antonio Gibson, uh, he'll be on this team as well. We could do the handcuff thing that sometimes you guys do enjoy. At this point with this production, I think we can actually add in a guy who comes in later in the year and hopefully can recover from his injury. I'm going to take Keaton Mitchell here. I think that he is a better pick at this point than Roshan, who I just have concerns. Chicago brings in a lobe, and that really makes Roshan's role nothing. Uh, Eli Mitchell, just pure handcuff, and I just don't want a pure handcuff. I'm taking McCaffrey at the 101. So my team so far, CJ Stroud and Drake May. Christian McCaffrey, Trey Branson, uh, Trey, Trey Benson, Zach Charbonnet, Antonio Gibson, Keaton Mitchell. So look, we're expecting Christian McCaffrey to do a lot of legwork here. If you're taking McCaffrey 101, I think that's how you draft. Uh, but either way, though, Benson coming in, getting a starting job. We're hoping for that. Charbonnet can win the starting job. Gibson can win the starting job. Keaton Mitchell can come back in and be healthy in November. That's what we're hoping from him. Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, and Khalil Shakir, a wide receiver, and a tight end, Brock Bowers, and Dalton Schultz. I mean, tight end's been locked down for a while. I feel good about that. Uh, I think I need to add a little bit more at wide receiver still. I feel like missing on that first round wide receiver because we took McCaffrey and then, you know, having another 23 picks before we pick again. Would like to get in at least one more wide receiver, if not two. Uh, honestly, maybe even three. Could make the case as well to add one or two more running backs. So we're open for business and don't think we need a third QB. I'm okay with going Drake May and obviously Stroud going where he is. I think you have to be okay with him. Uh, but could add a third QB if we wanted. Don't think we need to. Tom Brady's contract is going to give him a longer, a larger ownership stake for each win. Yeah, so Tom Brady, uh, weird news item to drop all of a sudden that he thinks he can come back. 
Oh, was it a meme? Okay, because they didn't retire Brady yet, did they? Or did they? And I missed it. I obviously I'm not paying the most attention to New England Patriots retirement ceremonies. Um, but yeah, Tom Brady might come back if a team is injured and wants him, which you would think that uh, I know Minnesota fans, again, I'm sure vikingsterritory.com was all over this one. Um, Minnesota fans I saw on Twitter being mad about the fact like, well, why didn't you come back last year when we needed somebody? And they had to start Nick Mullins and Josh Dobbs. Uh, obviously for Brady, I think it's still mostly unlikely, but certainly an interesting wrinkle out there. If Atlanta goes down, if, if Kirk Cousins coming off that injury, uh, Jets, could, could he play for the Jets? That would be a wild one too. But if the Jets add another weapon, if they add a neighbors or a Brock, and then you have Garrett Wilson, you have Brees, and you have that defense as well, kind of an ideal spot to come back to. So I wouldn't draft Tom Brady or anything, but weird thing to say. Yeah, I agree. I thought that was odd because they're paying him money. And next year's supposed to be the year that he starts doing TV, but apparently he wasn't that good or wasn't ready to be in that role for year one. So uh, maybe he's still not ready, and this is him kind of couching that. But definitely a weird scene because they're paying him so much fucking money. Taking over from Rogers and showing him how it's done would be, <laughs> actually, that is a funny point. That would be a very amusing thing to do. Those fits, though, I mean, Detroit would be another one, maybe. You can come in and take them to the promised land. Like anybody who's like a statue as the Rams would be another one, maybe. It's got to be a contender. Rams probably not enough of a contender. Jets might be enough of a contender. Miami would be the fun one, but they're, I don't, I honestly don't know that this iteration of Miami will ever be a contender. Really? That defense needs to get a lot better. And they lost one of their key guys in defensive line. Christian Wilkins. Like I, I don't know. Maurice Jones, Drew MJD, the model for short running backs fast for short. Yeah. I mean, I think that Lloyd's a little bit bigger than MJD. Uh, Lloyd is also incredibly shifty. The straight line speed might not be as much as MJD. Obviously. I don't know. MJD's combine numbers offhand. Um, but yeah, for Lloyd, like the shiftiness is what really jumped out to me. He didn't get enough work to feel confident that he'll be that shifty forever, but he had like a 90% avoided tackle rate when catching a pass. Like he, every time that he's catching the ball, he's making somebody miss. And when he was running the ball, it was also incredibly high too. I can actually just look up the numbers instead of uh, conjecturing. Marshawn Lloyd had a 37% avoided tackle rate on 12.3 opportunities per game. And then a 85% missed tackle rate on his pass play is good for a 0.4 EPA there. Uh, 0.06 EPA on run plays honestly should have been a little bit better, but USC's offensive line was so ass that that's probably a part of that too. Yeah, Blake Horam, definitely old. Going to be 24 before, before Thanksgiving. Not great. I agree. I agree. Corum is like a... To me, he's like a Saquon guy where people saw him be good in college. The Saquon in college was like electric. Corum has never been electric to me. He's just been like like a real sturdy kind of solid back. Like I, but he's too small. Like he's better than Deuce Vaughn, but the avoided tackle rate is not much better than Deuce Vaughn. Uh, Corum numbers from last year, 10% avoided tackle rate. 10% stuff run rate though is not that bad. Uh, that would be on the lower mark of the class, lower than Braylon Allen even. Um, and he caught passes pretty well, points to two EPA there. He, he, honestly, he was productive enough. He just is a little bit too small. All right, we're on the clock here. God, we could really, really play the RB hits if we wanted. <sighs> I haven't done it in a while, and I do believe in these guys. I'm actually just going to back-to-back Bucky Irving and Audric Estime here. Might not be the most plus EV move, but I believe in these guys still. Uh, the draft capital worries me tremendously. Uh, and we just didn't take enough running backs besides McCaffrey. So that's really the main logic here. Team so far, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Benson, Zach Charbonnet, Antonio Gibson, Keaton Mitchell, and then Bucky Irving and Audric Estime. Uh, I'm making a flyer on those guys. At QB, we have CJ Stroud and Drake May. Um, I'm okay with that being a two-QB build. Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, Khalil Shakir at wide receiver. At tight end, we've got Brock Bowers and Dalton Schultz. So I think we're going to take some late New England receivers probably. Try to pair him with Drake May. It's going to be the approach. <laughs> Lisa handcuffs CMC with his future backup Estime. Honestly, if Estime would be, if he were the guy that, if he took the role from Mitchell and Mason, I'd actually be pretty stoked about that outcome and having him decently heavy. Um, you know, the better outcome for him would have been going to the Bengals or something. Like it's, you know, Dallas obviously would be the nutty outcome, but he's like the one running back that Dallas hasn't brought in. So I think that dream might be dead. 
unless they're trying to throw people off the set, but I don't know if that's likely. All right, bunch of picks coming up here. I'm going to hydrate. Holla if you hydrate. Shout all the hydro homies out there. Drinking water keeps you young. That's what they say. I don't know who says it. Somebody says it. I just said it. So that's, that's two people now. <laughs> two people now contributing that one. Uh, Dylan Labe goes to blue list here. So we did not get the uh, the other fun rookies. And frankly, as much as it pains me, because I do think that Irving and Estime are really good performers, there might be more credibility in taking Labe right now with some of the visits he's gotten, what he offers as a specific you know, kind of role as a pass catcher. Uh, that's where I... I uh, I hate to be like I hate to have to say that, but I do think it might be the case that Labe should perhaps go ahead of Bucky and Estime. I don't know that I would rank him ahead, but it might be right. Taking two rookies back to back kind of feels like hand cucking, but in a much higher ceiling way. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's just like the hope is maybe one of these two guys hit, and again, I had to not get them enough in my portfolio because people are very excited about them early on, and then after the combine, they're less excited. But I'm also less excited, so we'll be there. I guess I'll be a 20% estimate by the end of the big board. Sammy here, one of our regulars, one of our beloved regulars, trying to squirt his way to the top. Love the knowledge. Very proud. Telesco was wondering if I can buy my seniority back. No worries. Either way, you're stuck with me forever. Um, I think if you let it cancel, I, I don't have a way to do it on my end, unfortunately. So uh, you got to just keep it, keep your cards fresh, I guess, on YouTube. But I appreciate you either way, Sammy. You're Have no fear. You're still a beloved regular. And I think, too, when I when I do sort it by the... Uh, by the names or whatever. I sort by time as a member. So you'll still be on you know, the list in a nice little spot. Oh, <laughs> don't drink the water. Just a theory, not an opinion. I think the water is okay. I actually haven't talked about one thing here with the water. Speaking of, so it's been raining a lot in the Philly area. Last week, we had a mouse in the house that we caught in a trap. Uh, actually, technically my wife caught in the trap. Uh, one of those ones, it was a kill trap, unfortunately. So mice died. Yesterday, another mouse that we had in the house, but a little one um, because of the rain, I guess they're, they're like, they're coming in, having two in a couple weeks does not fill me with joy. Had a little mouse here that my cat, Nilla, my 19 year old cat who turns 20 this year. Um, she shook the mouse for the second time. since we lived here. Uh, she'd caught a mouse a couple years ago, shook the mouse unconscious. I thought it was dead. Then I like went to go get something to get rid of the mouse. Saw the mouse had flipped where like his tail was on this side. And all of a sudden his tail was on this side, right outside the studio where I record. And I had to, I had to smash that, not smash. I had to like, <laughs> I had to squish the mouse's head and it was not happy for me. So rest in peace to that mouse, but also a reminder, any of you mice watching out there, I, I got one, I got one body count. I got a teardrop right here for all you mice. And we don't, we, we don't have enough, we don't have any safe traps in here. So fucking don't come in the house, guys. Don't come in the house. Rip indeed, rip indeed. <laughs> fucking Blake Corum cat. Yeah, look, I guess a lot of house cats live longer, but Nilla, yeah, Nilla's uh, been old enough to, to vote for a couple of years now, technically. But I got her in college. Uh, she was abandoned with a box of other kittens in uh, Simi Valley, if you know that area in California. Uh, when I was at USC, it was with my ex-girlfriend at the time, and uh, basically box of kittens. Somebody who's outside the bar we were at was like, hey, we found this box of kittens. Uh, we took Nilla home and a box of Nilla wafers, so she is Nilla, and she's my... My little girl has been with me for fucking longer than almost everybody besides my best friends. <laughs> yeah, sorry to the chat rats. I fucking squished your head. Had to finish him. Yeah, I had to. He was he was done, man. He was concussed, and I'm not I'm not picking him up. I don't want. <laughs> I don't. I just don't want to do that. I'm a city boy. I don't. I don't want creatures. Two seven six two here. <laughs> Get another share to Marcus Robinson. <laughs> keep, keep playing the hits. Let's go get Kendrick Bourne. I don't know this is a great pick for a guy coming off an ACL tear, but he keeps finding a way. And we do have, you know, we have Drake May here. He's going to New England is the most likely assumption right now. Uh, so we're going to take him. And who's the best wide receiver pick right now? I just took Robinson. I'm kind of kind of over that. Could take Noah Brown for one more dart throw at Houston. And I guess I'll do that here. Noah Brown for free at this point. I like Brendan Rice, as you guys know. But we'll take Noah Brown here. Uh, team so far, CJ Stroud and Drake May at uh, running back. We got seven running backs despite taking Christian McCaffrey because we went running back early with McCaffrey and then didn't hit it for a while. McCaffrey, Trey Benson, Zach Charbonnet, Antonio Gibson, Keaton Mitchell, Bucky Irving, Audrey Gastame. 
wide receiver, Bleak Neighbors, Nico Collins, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jamison Williams, Khalil Shakir, Kendrick Bourne, and Noah Brown for hopefully a little bit lower owned Houston correlation at this point. The tight end, Brock Bowers, and Dalton Schultz. So Houston triple here, not the Houston triple we wanted uh, the other week, but it is a Houston triple, if nothing else. KJ Osborne, yeah, I guess he is on New England. I guess I, I need to put my brain in that, though. Oof. KJ Osborne does nothing for me. And I think they added one rookie that upsets things enough. Who have they brought in? Let's see who New England's brought in. New England's brought in Javon Brisker at wide receiver from Central Florida. Classic fucking New England thing to do. Uh, they had in Troy Franklin for a top 30. Yikes. But I guess it wouldn't be a bad outcome with him uh, and Drake May. Uh, they brought in Malik Neighbors at one point, or they saw him at his pro day. Saw Dunze at the Combine. Saw Nia Smith at his pro day. Brian Thomas Combine. So yeah, nothing too interesting there besides Troy Franklin, I guess. We know he's going to the Bills, so, you know. <laughs> no, what a fucking bummer that would be. I guess if you get Drake May, it might be a wash, but... If I'm like, oh, Troy Franklin going to the Bills, I'm so excited. Can't wait to see it happen. And then it's like, oh, uh, never mind. He's going to New England. Uh, that'd be a downer. New England with Jacoby Brissett <laughs> would be the biggest downer. Technically, Noah Brown will be over in this tourney because of how much. Oh, yeah. Well, they, but he wouldn't be at this ADP. He was going a, little, a couple rounds ahead. But yes, you're right. You're in it. Time to let Traylon Burks go on draft. New coaching staff hasn't held a practice yet and already given up on him. Yeah, that didn't sound good for Traylon. Uh, they're not even considering him for the slot role, which I think would be the best usage of him. But uh, they're talking about Kyle. I talked about it yesterday, but they were talking about their slot guys and saying, hey, we need somebody who's going to take over the slot role. We have Kyle Phillips. We have Nisbrek, uh, Nick Westbrook-Akine. We have somebody else who isn't Traylon that they were talking about. Uh, but they view Traylon, I think, as just a backup to Ridley and Hopkins, and that means he's probably dead. He would be probably a much better player playing out of the slot especially with those two guys there. But yeah, I'll take Traylon if I have a, a Levis stack. I'll take him in the 20th, 19th round, maybe. Javon Brisker is actually Javon Baker. Oh, okay, that would make more sense then. I was, I didn't get that. Okay, good to know. So Walter Football is a typo then, Javon Baker. Shout out Alex B. Keaton, coming in clutch. Yeah, big slot would have been perfect. It's just, you know... I think Hayden and Josh have talked to this an underdog too, but sometimes guys just can't do all the things in the world and that's okay. It's like, it's your job to put these guys in position to succeed. And I think that for Tennessee, for Traylon, like I think his career might be done because they didn't put him in position to succeed. They just wanted to be AJ Brown and he kind of looked like AJ Brown, but did not have the skill set enough there. Uh, the irony is like AJ Brown in this class to me is Xavier Leggett, but uh, nobody's, you know, Tennessee's not going to take him now. <laughs> so that's probably how that goes. If they did, that'd be pretty, pretty sick. Like big slots are a lot of fun. I like when Hopkins plays out of the slot. Like I just like, that's the thing with neighbors. Like if they take neighbors, they're just going to put them out of the slot. And it's like, you should be moving these guys around where you like, you have neighbors out wide. Sometimes you have Hopkins in the slot. Ridley can't really play in the slot. I don't think um, just doesn't have the route nuance to his game. Um, but I think in general, like that's what I want to see is like, you want these guys moving around. That's what the best teams do is get these guys in different positions. Uh, the Rams, the best example of that, where Cooper Cubs mostly playing on the slot, but you'll move Puka inside too. You'll get these guys around a little bit more. Um, that's what the sharp coaches do. And like the dumb coaches are like, yo, yeah, well, we just need a guy to go here. And I, I thought I like, I think Brian Callahan's a sharp coach. So kind of baffles me that he's just like, yeah, we just need a slot. Like move these guys around, take advantage of the matchups. It's a whole thing. Oh, Steelers wanting leg it. Oh no, I hope not. Is that according to Steelers territory.com? <laughs> Gonna get a Xavier leg it. No, I, I, I hope not. I hope not. I just don't want anybody. I like to go to Pittsburgh. After it's gobbled up my boy George Pickens enough, we just don't need it. Still willing to buy in on the hope that Arthur Smith like is humbled. <laughs> Hard to say the billionaire son's going to be humbled, but that would be the hope is that, you know, he comes back with a reinvig reinvigorated kind of passion for being an offensive coordinator, calling plays after completely botching his coaching job. But I don't know. Thank you. Chris likes narrower slots. Disgusting. There's ladies in the audience. <laughs> can't, who wants to talk like that? It's gentlemen only here. Packers will trade a seventh for Burks. <laughs> There's seven wide receiver orientation. If honestly, I could see Green Bay drafting one more, but it's got to be like a late guy. This clash just has too much value. If you end up in the fifth round and 
I don't know, he's looking you in the face, but if like a, a Baker were somehow there, I don't, I don't know if he did. He's probably got to go earlier. I feel like all the receivers, the assumptions like they're going to go first four rounds. A uh, last pick in the draft. Uh, ben Sinnott. Ben Sinnott's here. I could take a little more correlation. You know what? That's a smarter move. We'll get a little more correlation with KJ Osborne. Ben Sinnott tempting, but I don't think I need Ben Sinnott with Brock Bowers and Dalton Schultz. So we're going to go with KJ Osborne as my final pick. Uh, let's see. It's going to move me to the, the new room, right? Okay, here we go. Final team here, draft number 54 for me here on stream. Of course, the one got thrown like, draft 55, I guess, on stream. Is that right? No, no. The one that got thrown out is still counted for. Okay, we're good. Uh, 2792 here. Uh, CJ Stroud, Drake May at QB. At running back, Christian McCaffrey, Trey Benson, Zach Charbonnet, Antonio Gibson, Keaton Mitchell, Bucky Irving, Audrey Gestime. Wide receiver, we got Malik Neighbors, Nico Collins, uh, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Jameson Williams, Khalil Shakir, Kendrick Bourne, Noah Brown, KJ Osborne, and a tight end. We got Brock Bowers and Dalton Schultz. So a solid team here. Uh, what? No, no. <laughs> I don't, no disrespect here. I don't want to sauce teams. I've been on for two hours. So uh, let's hit the plugs and let's get out of here and do the reading of names, guys. Promo code Splash and Underdog. Uh, actually, no, first the big plug. So subscribe. Do this tomorrow. Uh, me and Pete reunited tomorrow, 8 p.m. tomorrow on the channel. Blocking out my own face. Uh, doing the drunk stream here. Then the best ball after dark on Pete's channel. So going to be a good conversation. Always love catching up with Pete. Uh, one of my best friends in the business and certainly somebody I've spent a lot of stream hours with. So excited to be doing that tomorrow. Come join us on that journey. And if you want to drink along with us too, uh, that'll be going on pretty hard and heavy. Underdog promo code splash, double your deposit on there. Of course, you guys see me playing on here every day. Do that for yourself. Mystery pick them as well if you're a new customer. Check that out. Probably best sport betting data in the world, especially in an app. Again, you could quickly transact on bets and get a 22% ROI like I had in March. I think it was 135 and 122 was my record. So above 500 even. That's sports betting data for you. It's very hard to do that. We believe we have the data that can help you do that. So check it out for yourself. Probably.com slash subscribe. Check the pinned comments as well. I'll leave a seven-day free trial link on the app store for you guys too. So casting. Masters tournaments coming up on DFS this weekend. NBA, if you want to play some tank mode games, still going on. Stochastics tools will get you there no matter what the sport is. Uh, so check it out for yourself. Promo code SPLASH. Get 15% off. Thank you to the Squirt Squad. Reading of names coming up here. I think uh, I haven't updated today, so if there's anybody new, my apologies. But I got everybody on here. Uh, Robert Griffin the Turd, Historical Anomalies, no bits today. Matthew Emerson, Tyler, CLN, Mathology, Rupesh, Willis is Awesome, Ivan Black, Rodby Throbin, Port, Mark, a.k.a. Io, a.k.a. Tony Mark, Rob Van Natten, Brandon Wagner, Consigliere, Aaron D, Nez, Jake Twitchell, fucking Alpha, Mr. Mr. I pointed the wrong way. There we go. Sammy Telesco, Sammy, our VIP, I am the KY, Kevin Castro, Lateralis, Lunchable Connoisseur, Short Gamer, uh, shout out to him, by the way, crushing an MLB DFS with Stochastic Tools, uh, Carlos, Felix Castro, Chunk, Spurious News, Gabe Davis, our guy Bindles, check out his YouTube channel, uh, Frankie Frank, Nolan, Thomas Schultz, uh, Laces Out, Kent, Kyler, Jonathan V, Jay, Jeff F, Craig B, Jason, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas, your band's almost over. I'm going to take you off this weekend. Uh, Steel City Blue, Thomas Avery, and W for Omega. You guys have all helped me put on the show this week, and I appreciate that very much. You too can support the show hitting that join button down below $49 a month. You'll be getting the Spags rankings, private Squirt Squad Discord, on the Deposit Game Discord, and a lot more here. And just the honor of helping put on the show every day. But I appreciate all you guys hanging out with me. It was a lot of fun doing two drafts. We've now caught up from missing two shows. So tomorrow, back with Pete at 8 p.m. And then a doubleheader draft here. So that'll be fun. And I'll see you guys then. Game responsibly. Until that time, guys. And uh, hey, here's a, here's a new egg. Do the thing, buddy. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Just, I'm just somebody that's into new eggs. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Enjoy your days. Good luck. I'm just going to keep this up. Bye.